world of heroes wielding swords and magic, Heroes Continent. At this very moment, this place currently has a large-scale massive war taking place due to the Demon Queen launching an all-out war against all the races. With the help of the Demon Queen's oppressive strength, the Demon Queen's army was like a hot knife through butter in their attacks, and the empires of the various races fell to ruin one after the other very quickly. Only the human race remained steadfast in their resistance. But alas, because of the internal strife and rebellions amongst the humans, their empire collapsed along with their defenses. Humans surrender, and just like that, she was dubbed the strongest demon queen in history. Elizabeth as well as secured her position as the only ruler of this world. It was a complete domination. At the human empire on the edge of destruction, a priest was still struggling and fighting with demon queen army. Priest shouted telling Elizabeth to don't think she have won with this alone. In the future, she will definitely be defeated completely by their hero, just like in the legends, Queen's Guard. Kick that priest in face. He is human prince. Wise Malfoy and the priest he just kicked is Wise Malfoy's teacher, Priest Barrow. Wise Malfoy asked Priest Barrow to please get things straight. Because right now, Her Majesty isn't asking for his opinion. She's giving him an order. Priest Barrow yelled that it's all bullshit. And Wise Malfoy is a patricide committing, enemy welcoming, traitor of the human race. Priest Barrow even cultivated him as if he were the prophesied hero in vain. Wise Malfoy get angry to hear Priest Barrow's nonsense. He told Priest Barrow they since he miss Wise Malfoy's useless father of his so much. Wise Malfoy will just let Priest Barrow join him. Wise Malfoy unleashed his demon hand and transform it into demon's arm. But when was Malfoy strike at Priest Barrow, a dark shadow appeared behind him telling him to stay his hand. Wise Malfoy stop his attack right before it hit Priest Barrow. Wise Malfoy knees in front of that shadow. That shadow asked Priest Barrow that since he said that he will stand by human side in the future and it will end Demon Queen's defeat. So he better explain what he mean to this queen, Oregon. Else his death would not be an easy one. The existence standing in front of Priest Barrow is Demon Queen, Elizabeth. Elizabeth threatened Priest Barrow by telling him that this queen has a thousand different ways to make him suffer a fate worse than death. Priest Barrow was too scared to see his death in Elizabeth's eyes. He started telling her that the prophecy states that when the prophesied hero pulls out the Holy Sword, it will be the day the demon race's reign comes to an end. The Holy Sword is the sword embedded in the stone platform in the main hall. After telling her everything Priest Barrow said he will never tell her. He will never betray the human race. Priest Barrow has lost his mind to fear. Elizabeth looks at stone platform in which Holy Sword, Alpha was embedded. The legends tell of the hero receiving the right to challenge this queen because he pulls out this sword. As Elizabeth put her hand on that holy sword, she thought that it's interesting. Elizabeth said this queen shall look forward to his arrival here then. Since then Elizabeth was waiting. But the first year under Elizabeth's reign ended while wadding. Then second year under Elizabeth's reign ended while wadding. As well as third, fourth and fifth year ended. And now it's the fifteenth year under Elizabeth's reign. Under the Demon Queen's absolute rule, all the past practices and inequalities amongst the races were all abolished. Everyone was able to get along on equal standing without disputes. Everyone was able to live in peace and harmony developing together. Very quickly, Heroes Continent began thriving and flourishing. Additionally, because they were afraid of the rare peace being destroyed, an anti-hero alliance emerged. They resolutely rejected the arrival of the prophesied hero, Demon Empire at the initial Human Empire meeting hall. Demon Queen Elizabeth asked her subordinate, Do they have any news on the prophesied hero, Chancellor of the Elf Race? Twilio reported to Elizabeth that the Elf Race has already mobilized all the tree insects to search, but they could not find a single piece of information regarding the prophesied hero, Chancellor of the Dwarf Race. Heimerdinger told Elizabeth that the dwarves are not very good at collecting information, but according to the information compiled from every weapon store around, there has been nobody suspicious. Chancellor of the Human Race, Aristotle said that he believed that even if that prophesied hero does make his appearance, him standing up against them will be in vain, so they need not worry about him at all. Chancellor of the Demon Race, Jim Jim whisper and told Aristotle that Her Majesty isn't afraid of the prophesied hero. Instead, she really wants him to come. In order to act in response to that prophecy, her Majesty gathered all sorts of ancient books on magic and war tactics to research. Chancellor of the Beast Man Race, Muggle told Aristotle that as long as Her Majesty wills it, she could annihilate Hero's Continent in a split second. Twilia said that it's that idiot Barrow's fault. What prophecy? It's just a load of nonsense. With Her Majesty ruling it is their fortune. They can just let the prophesied hero die. Suddenly, someone entered yelling, Reject the hero, reject the hero in the hall. Heimerdinger said, Speak of Barrow. 
and he shall appear, initially high priest of the human race now president of the Demon Queen fan club, president of the anti-prophesied hero association. Barrow Smith, he was shouting, support the reign of Her Majesty, the Demon Queen reject the arrival of the hero. Demon Queen with one flick of her finger grabbed Priest Barrow by neck. Elizabeth was too angry. She asked Priest Barrow to explain himself to this queen. Where is that prophesied hero? Priest Barrow was too scared, he told her that. Actually, the prophecy doesn't necessarily have to be accurate. When the target exceeds the expectations of the prophecy, like your majesty, for example, was Malfoy greets the demon queen and said that Priest Barrow is right. It is a great offense to take that stupid prophecy and apply it to her majesty. It is too great an offense. Her majesty need not take offense in the slightest. This official has had new findings recently. Elizabeth hit was Malfoy with her tail and in cold voice told him to get lost. Was Malfoy was scared, he said he understood. Elizabeth throw Priest Barrow and shouted that her subordinates are bunch of trash. Elizabeth said, the king have reached the peak of the world, holding the power of the world. She wait for the legendary hero to challenge her and then become his stepping stone to fame. She have studied all the ancient magic books of the hero continent, and after countless hardships, she created the doomsday magic to wait for hero's challenge. But hero is nowhere to be seen. Where is he? She was looking at the holy sword and getting angry thinking all this. Then she put her hand of the holy sword and said that since Hero isn't coming to her. Jim Jim, Twilia and all the Chancellor were scared asking Queen Elizabeth that she don't mean to. Elizabeth shouted that she'll go to herself then. Elizabeth grabbed the holy sword and tried to unleash it. There was a huge shockwave of aura around Elizabeth. It was hard of Elizabeth to pull out the holy sword so she used all her power to and concentrate on holy sword. All the chancellors were scared to see Elizabeth's power. They couldn't believe that Demon Queen is really going to pull out Hero's sword. Suddenly, a huge energy light beam comes out of the rooftop of the Queen's palace, and the Demon Queen Elizabeth successfully pull out the Holy Sword. Elizabeth looks at the Holy Sword and thought that who said that only the legendary hero can pull it out. She can do it too. When Elizabeth was holding the Holy Sword, she got a vision of a faraway mountain range. And on top of a mountain, there is a house. She thought that legendary hero is hiding there. Elizabeth raised her hand and used Labus magic. A magic circle appear. The magic she going to use was force teleportation. When was Malfoy saw that she is going, he runs towards her asking her to please let him continue to serve her by her side. But he was too slow. And Elizabeth teleported. Was Malfoy could only get her one hair. He was too sad because his master left him. On the other hand, at the newbie village, the legendary hero was wearing farming clothes and was holding an axe. He said that farming is too peaceful. His name is La Ping. In reality, he is just an ordinary office worker living a dull life, not fond of playing games or watching anime. The only pleasure is probably watching his favorite short videos on the way to work. When he was watching some short video, he said, he's so envious, if only he could live like this too. And the next moment he teleported in this world, he was confused at first. But under the guidance of the newbie system, he slowly learned the basic survival skills here. He don't know anything about this different world at all. But it doesn't matter, isn't this the kind of pastoral life that he want? His body is much healthier than when he was working. But one day while he was working, the newbie system told him that after this period of newbie training, La Ping have fully met the conditions to leave the newbie village. So System asked him to please start his adventure. La Ping asked System that isn't it fine now. Why do we have to leave newbie System told La Ping that after leaving the newbie village, La Ping will meet all kinds of other people in this world. He can learn various skills of sword and magic from them, become the legendary hero and kill the demon king. So please start your adventure. But System was shocked to hear that La Ping don't want to kill any demon king at all. Can he just continue living here? System said, of course not. Killing the Demon King is the player's mission. System message comes one after another asking La Ping to please start his adventure. The system kept urging him to leave the newbie village and start an adventure. But besides nagging, it can't do anything to La Ping. So to hell with what Demon King. La Ping just want to live like this forever. Because there is a special time barrier here that can completely hide the newbie village for safety and inside the barrier. A day has far more than 24 hours of time perception, which also allows Le Ping to do more things he like. Le Ping do farming and level up. He do hunting and level up. He so forging and level up. He still know nothing about swords and magic. But for him who doesn't go out for adventure, those are not important at all. Through exchanging points from newbie tasks, he slowly built his ideal pastoral home from scratch. Until one day, newbie system get too angry at La Ping. System yell at him that, 
How can he be this outrageous in this world of sword and magic every day? He only know how to farm farm and fair, ignoring system suggestions completely. How is this a legendary hero at all? La Ping only know how to play with newbie points and exchange them for maintenance tools. He don't want to learn any sword skills or magic at all. System's various adventure assistance functions have no room to play at all. System hate it. System hope. La Ping die soon by the Demon King. And then System crashed, and then disappeared. La Ping was now free and was doing farming to survive. And one day when Lei Ping saw that the firewood seems to be running low, so he thought he should prepare some first. But he forgot to bring his axe back from the woods when he went out to chop wood in the morning. Suddenly, La Ping noticed that dark clouds are forming with lightning. La Ping said that there's no way at this time it will rain. But La Ping don't know that it's not raining clouds, but it's a magic circle which Elizabeth used to teleport there. Elizabeth said that she finally found the legendary hero. But La Ping ignore her and runs towards the house, shouting that it's going to rain heavily all of a sudden. And all his clothes and dried fish are going to get wheat. Elizabeth was lost of words. La Ping said, luckily he made it in time. Otherwise, his dried fish and sausages would have gone bad. Wang Kai, an electronic pet dog for companionship, comes running towards La Ping. Wang Kai run around La Ping to play. But La Ping told Wang Kai to stop it, because it's about to rain, so hurry back inside. Suddenly, La Ping hear a sound. When he looks at the sky, he saw something flying in the sky. He asked Wang Kai that what's that thing in the sky. Elizabeth told La Ping that he is quite dull. How dare he address her as something. La Ping said sorry to her, saying he didn't see it clearly earlier. La Ping was thinking, why did someone suddenly come here? Isn't the newbie village supposed to be completely safe? Elizabeth decided to let's verify first if La Ping is the hero or not. Elizabeth for the holy sword at La Ping. La Ping asked her to wait, but it was too late. La Ping was scared, so he covered his face by his hand. Elizabeth was surprised to see that the holy sword didn't hit La Ping and turns around and get in his hand. La Ping consciously grabbed to the sword and move it like the legendary hero. But he returned back to normal was confused that something suddenly flew into his hand. Elizabeth was also confused to see La Ping. What's going on? The recognition of the holy sword alpha can't be wrong. But La Ping's magic sensing ability is so low that even ordinary soldiers surpass it. She thought, could it be that La Ping is hiding his true power? Elizabeth was very angry. She make a magic circle and shouted that she is Elizabeth, the strongest demon queen in history. And today she shall completely obliterate La Ping, the legendary hero. La Ping get too scared when he hear that she is demon queen. La Ping was thinking that why is she here when he haven't left this place. Wang Kai was barking at Elizabeth. La Ping told Wang Kai to shut up. Don't provoke her. La Ping saw that Elizabeth used her abyss magic and many magic circle appeared in the sky. Elizabeth used extinction magic and summoned many giant rocks to throw at La Ping. La Ping understand now. As Tai System said, the meeting between the hero and the demon queen is inevitable, even if he never left the newbie village. La Ping turned around and throw the holy sword. Now there's nothing more to say. He started waking towards his house, but his legs were shaking in fear. He was thinking that so far he ve been a newbie noob, but the final boss has come knocking. So besides accepting his fate, what else can he do? La Ping grabbed his door and looks back, thinking perhaps he should be content. He have no regrets, knowing he could spend such happy times here. La Ping goes inside the house thinking that in the end, he will return to zero with this home. La Ping closed the door as he have accepted his death. But Elizabeth gets angry because what it looks like to her that La Ping smiled at her and challenged her to come if she can. Elizabeth shouted that it's unbelievable. La Ping is an arrogant bastard. She launched those giant rocks at La Ping's house. When Wang Kai saw those rocks, suddenly some command started running in his mind. When those rocks were about to hit the house, Wang Kai's calculation was completed. From Wang Kai's stomach missile launcher and many more weapons pop up, Wang Kai turned into war robot and destroyed all those giant rocks with his missiles. After destroying that giant rock, Wang Kai started barking again at Elizabeth. Elizabeth said as expected. The hero from the legend dares to be so arrogant. It turns out he rely on having an advanced magical tool with awakened sentience. She unleash her power and said that in front of her everything is inferior. In the sky, it looks like clouds are going to falling. But it was Elizabeth's apocalyptic magic. Elizabeth said, she be lost interest in probing the hero any further. So let's end it here. The magic she used this time is earth recasting. A super laugh in RG ball started falling from the sky towards the beginner's village. Again, Wang Kai started calculating the attack power. And as his calculation completed, Wang Kai's mouth opened and a black energy ball started farming. 
When that black energy ball saw sufficient energy, then Wang Kai launched it at Elizabeth. Elizabeth easily dodged that black energy ball saying it's useless. That black energy ball hit Elizabeth's super large energy and disappear. Elizabeth laughs and told Hero to disappear obediently along with this land. But to her surprise, Wang Kai's black energy ball was a quantum mechanical black holes it blasts and absorbed Elizabeth's super large energy ball and disappear. Elizabeth was too stunned to see that her apocalyptic magic has been cracked. Elizabeth was scared thinking what did Hero La Ping do inside the house to crack her magic. But little did she know that La Ping was simply lying on his bed, all prepared and is waiting for death. Elizabeth comes down on the ground where Elizabeth was. She looks at Wang Kai. Wang Kai looks at her with an anger while barking at her. Elizabeth started laughing like crazy. Then her eyes turns black and she said that unexpectedly. In the end it's she who underestimated legendary hero. But Elizabeth's hand started extending. Her wings extended. And because more scary, she told Hero to don't get too conceited. Because so far Shiva only used less than 30% of her power. Elizabeth powered up and goes in her demon god form. She shouted, Impudent scoundrel I show you what real terror is. Elizabeth fly towards Wang Kai with her full power. And Wang Kai also goes in his war robot mode to fight Elizabeth. There was huge energy blast when both of them collide with each other. One hour later, La Ping fall asleep with waiting for his death. When his sleep break, he wakes up thinking have he already died. But when he looks forward, he saw the same things he had in his house. He was surprised that isn't he still at home. When he stand up, it seems quiet outside too. La Ping grabbed the door lock with his shaking hands. He was scared thinking that the demon queen wouldn't be waiting for him out there like a maniac, right? La Ping slowly opened the door and look outside. There was smoke everywhere, in the that he was Elizabeth in demon god mode who has destroyed Wang Kai. She cracked Wang Kai's front screen with her big nails. When Elizabeth saw La Ping, she throw Wang Kai's body and turned Elizabeth's eyes were full of killing instants. She said to La Ping that she is truly sorry, that she completely destroyed the magical tool he was so proud of. As she was coming towards La Ping, he was too scared. He told her that it's okay. Can't they sit down and talk? Elizabeth said. Sure, they can talk after she kill La Ping. But Elizabeth's head started shaking. Elizabeth thought that this is unbelievable to push her to her limits. Is this the ending that was foretold for her? And at last Elizabeth lost consciousness and fall on the ground. La Ping was surprised to see her falling down. He held her in his arms and asked her if she's okay. Elizabeth's demon god mode started dissipation. As her armor was despairing, her clothes started despairing. La Ping was too shocked to see it. He asked her that what is she trying to do. But Elizabeth's all clothes despaired. La Ping got a solid nosebleed after seeing Elizabeth's naked body. After some time at night, Elizabeth was sleeping on a bed while her she was handcuffed. But she was wearing clothes now. Suddenly she wakes up. She couldn't believe that. She, the demon queen, has suffered a humiliating defeat. And instead of taking the opportunity to kill her, Hiro imprisoned her. Did he do it to show his power to the world? Elizabeth gathered her abyss magic in her hand to break free. But she, her magic didn't work. Elizabeth thought that this handcuffs are another legendary class artifact she then never seen. Elizabeth was irritated thinking how much power is Hiro still hiding. She looks around in the room and analyze her surroundings. She thought that these strange things are definitely not simple. It seems this Hiro is much more wicked than she imagined. She underestimated him too much. Suddenly La Ping enters the room. He was surprised to see Elizabeth awake. When Elizabeth saw La Ping, she told him that if you want to kill her, don't expect her to beg for mercy. But La Ping didn't even listen to her. He was busy thinking that the demon queen is truly frightening. But this is his only chance to survive. He must seize it. He asked her if they can talk instead. When La Ping was putting the food he saw Elizabeth struggling with handcuffs. La Ping told her that he just used this handcuffs as a precaution. As she know how terrifying Elizabeth is, Elizabeth was confused. She don't understand what La Ping is saying at all. La Ping believed there must be a misunderstanding between them. He said he'll unlock the handcuffs for her now, and then they can talk. But what Elizabeth understood is that La Ping is looking down at her, and he is saying sorry, because from the beginning, Elizabeth had a misunderstanding. She thought she was formidable enough to challenge the hero, but she is absolutely wrong. And if she want to stay alive, then fulfill his demands. Elizabeth was angry thinking that Hiro is threatening the demon queen. La Ping unlocked her handcuffs. La Ping said to Elizabeth that since he va unlocked the handcuffs to prove that he really have no ill intentions, so as promised they should talk. Elizabeth turned around thinking that the current situation is very unfavorable for her. Strong individuals know when to bend and when to stretch. She'll endure Hiro for now, 
but he'll regret his arrogance later. While Elizabeth was having all this thought La Ping was too scared, because he had now free her, he told Elizabeth to take a rest for now. Sure everyone is curious why La Ping didn't kill the demon queen when she was unconscious. So in this world of swords and magic, La Ping thought that it's perfectly normal for Elizabeth, as the demon queen, to possess a resurrection skill. Killing chickens and fish for soup is one thing, but La Ping could never kill a person, however. Resolving the conflict between the hero and the demon queen doesn't necessarily require killing and fighting. La Ping thought that as long as he can show that he posed no threat to her and become her friend, he can continue to live happily. La Ping started laughing while thinking about a master plan, but Elizabeth get more angry as she thought La Ping is still mocking her. La Ping asked pick up Wang Kai from outside, but he was sad that Wang Kai has become such a mess. Elizabeth asked La Ping if this thing is his most powerful magic tool. La Ping thought what magic tool? It's just a little thing he made while living here out of boredom but he was too lazy to explain it to Elizabeth. So he told her that she could say that. He told her that Wang Kai was developed by him just recently. When Elizabeth hear that she had a smile on her face, she thought that this time, it's La Ping's turn to be careless. After untying the handcuffs, she secretly used Abyss Infinite Magic to recover quickly. And Hero after losing the protection of his most powerful magic tool is like losing his right arm. She thought that the balance of power has tilted towards her. She stands up on the bed with full of killing intact. She said sorry to La Ping for breaking his things. La Ping told her that it's okay. The memory card is still safe. He pull out the memory card from Wang Kai's head. Elizabeth was ready to use her world destroying magic on La Ping. She thought that this moment is the best time for her to eliminate the legendary hero. But right before Elizabeth could attack, La Ping opens the closets, where was many Wang Kai's body. He told Elizabeth that since the body can't be repaired, so he made a lot of preparations here. Elizabeth was too stunned to see that many Wang Kai. La Ping picked one Wang Kai and put that memory card in it. Liu Wang Kai opened his eyes and started moving around him again. La Ping told Elizabeth that it's fun to have a companion, but sometimes it's naughty, so La Ping usually only activate one at home. Now La Ping and Wang Kai looks like some devil to Elizabeth. Elizabeth was too scared she fall on the bed saying that there is no way it's not possible. Suddenly Elizabeth smell something. She asked La Ping, what's the smell? La Ping told her that when he saw her faint, he made some food to warm her up. It was regular meat porridge and regular dumplings. Elizabeth said that only the weak need to eat. She have reached a transcendent state and don't need these things. Elizabeth said that, but her stomach start making sound. Elizabeth was embarrassed. La Ping get happy because he thought that resolving conflicts with delicious food can surely work. La Ping told Elizabeth that these are all made from vegetables and grains he grew himself. It's completely natural. He asked Elizabeth to please have a taste. Elizabeth while hesitating. Pitch one dumpling. She take a bite. She didn't say anything and just eat it. La Ping was nervous looking at Elizabeth. Although he is confident in his cooking. Will the demon queen with her status appreciate these newbie village things? Elizabeth one by one. Eat all the dumplings. Elizabeth said that with each bite, the meat juices burst like fireworks in her mouth. A natural and unadorned flavor. It also contains a high concentration of magical energy. Elizabeth was too satisfied. She didn't know before that this world actually has such a delicacy thing. It's so delicious that she the demon queen can't bear to swallow that last bite. When she swallow it, she was shocked. Elizabeth's heart skipped for a second. A volcano of spices erupt in her mouth. Elizabeth could barely control herself. She was too embarrassed to show this side of her. She told La Ping that it's so spicy. While shaking her body, Elizabeth asked La Ping what did he add to the food. La Ping was too scared because he added a bit of chili according to his own taste. He asked if the demon queen not handle spicy food. Elizabeth looks at La Ping and thought that, just as expected of Hero, there were no good intentions. This evil hero has imprisoned her just to use her for research experiments. But at that moment, Le Ping remembered that there is this thing. He told Elizabeth to try century egg and lean pork congee. It clears heat and reduces fire. Elizabeth thought that this hero is too evil, feeding poison on one hand and providing the antidote on the other, playing with her in the palm of his hand. He thought that there's no way around it. This strange feeling is too uncomfortable. Elizabeth picked up the spawn and took a bite of the porridge. The second Elizabeth put in her mouth, her mind traveled to the heaven. That was a very peaceful feeling. Elizabeth was too comfortable. The quest for world domination, the struggle between the demon queen and the hero, all of these disturbances no longer concern her, letting go of everything, living carefree. But because of this, the Chiva discovered how truly insignificant she is. Elizabeth advanced in breaking through at the same time. 
Thou Elizabeth is three-star demon queen. It was surprisingly to Elizabeth that by consuming food, she was brought into a new realm. Under the influence of two extreme stimuli, her power has once again advanced. Elizabeth told Le Ping to don't pretend she asked him what do we want. Le Ping smiled little as he was sacred. He said he just want them to research how a demon queen and a hero can coexist. Elizabeth was now nervous because she thought Le Ping is telling her that in this world, Elizabeth is the only one qualified to be the subject of his research as the hero, and he is asking Elizabeth to come let him help her become stronger, and then she defeat him. Le Ping asked her if that is okay. He'll also continue making delicious food to serve her. Elizabeth get more angry because she thought that Anai may be killed but not shamed, and she is the demon queen. How could he do that to her? It looks like to her that Le Ping is telling her that if she want to become stronger, he can help her. He is also looking forward to whether she can defeat him. But Elizabeth control herself and said, never mind, forget it. Le Ping get nervous. He thought she is telling him to forget his proposal. He thought is she still going to kill him. Elizabeth stand up on the bed and ask Le Ping to listen to her. She said she can agree with his conditions, but he should know this. He is doing this not out of fear but to pursue the pinnacle of strength. Le Ping was confused when he hear that she would fear him. She is the demon queen. She hold the power she can do as she wish. Elizabeth laughs and told Le Ping to don't think that she'll lower her head and be submissive while living here. Her dignity as the demon queen must never be violated. Otherwise, even if she have to sacrifice everything, she'll destroy the hero. Le Ping was too scared to see her. He said he understood. He asked her to let's try to get along. Flies quickly and one year has passed in the beginner's village. Now Holy Sword has been used as wood chopping tool. The atmosphere around the house is calm, but Le Ping's mind is now calm. Le Ping don't know what should he do because things have gotten too complicated ever since the Demon Queen. Elizabeth forcibly entered and broke the protective barrier of the newbie village. Time here has gradually synchronized with the outside world. Time synchronization isn't the issue. But what's disastrous is that without the barrier's protection, the newbie village has lost its concealment function and is completely exposed in the wilderness. And the monsters appearing nearby don't seem to be so simple. There are giant dragons, fire phoenix, and many more monsters are roaming the grounds. Le Ping know that he couldn't deal with any of them. He has the holy sword, but he can only use it to chop woods, but because of the demon queen's presence here monsters don't dare to approach. Le Ping thought that does this mean that once the demon queen leaves he will die? Suddenly Elizabeth's voice comes from inside the house asking Le Ping that it's lunchtime. Why isn't it ready yet? Le Ping get nervous when he hear that voice every time he reply that he is coming right away. So now Le Ping know that he must seek Elizabeth's protection if he want to survive in this world. The demon queen was watching the drama from the human world on the television. She watched drama all day and eat potato chips while lying on the comfortable sofa that slim and hot Elizabeth has turned into a fatty drama addict. She even complains that she is tired of watching these recordings of Le Ping. She asked him that can't he get something new from that system of his. Le Ping comes inside the room while holding a bowl full of food. He told Elizabeth that the system has long disappeared so it is impossible. He asked her to come on because he ve prepared lunch. Elizabeth sit up and asked Le Ping to just give her a moment. She moved her finger in air and used a magic spell. Two wings appeared on her back but they were too small compared to when she was a proper demon queen. Elizabeth slowly fly with those wings of hers to travel to the kitchen. Elizabeth asked Le Ping that what kind of poison is in these chips he is feeding her because she feel like the more she eat the lazier she become. Elizabeth was angry thinking that Le Ping is using the guise of delicious food to paralyze her with these slow-acting poisons, trying to lead her to total depravity. This is too delusional. Le Ping told her that these chips are high in calories. Eating too many can easily accumulate fat and people naturally become fat when Elizabeth was surprised to hear the word fat but when she look at her body she really has accumulate too much fat. She tried to touch her stomach but it was too soft and squeezy. Elizabeth flick her finger and use her deep sea magic on herself. The magic she used was negative attributes, conversion and this magic transform Elizabeth back to slim and hot. Demon Queen Elizabeth thought that Le Ping feed her all this so he can make her weak. She said sorry to him because all the fat that accumulated in her body has been converted into magic power. On the other hand, innocent Le Ping was amazed to see that magic can be used like this. Elizabeth laughs because another trick of Le Ping has foiled by her. She asked him how do he feel, very disappointed. Le Ping could laugh and agree to whatever she said. He said whatever Elizabeth say is right and ask her eat. Elizabeth's mouth watered after seeing the food placed in front of her. She said that today's lunch suits her taste perfectly so she won't hold back. Elizabeth turned slim but her habits are still that of a fatty. She was eating like animal Le Ping. 
ask her to wait and eat slowly but she didn't listen to him. He told her that if it's not enough he can make more. It doesn't matter if she eat more. Elizabeth stopped for a second and looks at Le Ping. She thought what does Le Ping mean to say is that Elizabeth is still too weak. She should fatten up before he kill her. Elizabeth get more angry after imagine all that. Le Ping said for dessert he'll go get it for her. Elizabeth thinking is Le Ping really treating her like a pig. In this past year she ve broken through more than 10 times. She should have the ability to challenge Le Ping now. He was going to ask him to let's have a decisive battle. But Le Ping take out Elizabeth's favorite puddin lug from the refrigerator. Elizabeth's mood swift from anger. When she see the puddin she jumped from her sit in joy and asked Le Ping to give it to her. Le Ping thought that fortunately this demon queen isn't that difficult to deal with. Having the right food can calm her down easily. On the other hand miles away from the beginner's village a old man was running away. He was not alone. A green-haired girl was also running away with him. Some ghost-like entities who were making click-click sound were after that old man and the girl. A ghost jumped from behind to attack. That ghost has scary nails and with it he tear the space. He used spatial tearing magic to attack both of them. When the old man saw it he run more fast to dodge and just when he was about to get out of the range that ghost pull in her hand and the spatial his strike get more strong and reach the old man immediately. But that was not a damage dealing attack instead. It was a trap named Nail Cage to trap both the old man and the girl in it. Warrior known as Evo and the blonde girl who was his daughter stood ready for combat against the assassins who had come for their life. The assassins had come for both of their lives. Evo warned the girl to keep her distance and stay behind him as he assumed a combat posture and readied his greatsword. The young woman objected and stated that she could not handle the thought of leaving her father to face the assassins by himself. Evo gently informed her that he had made a serious promise to her mother that he would defend their daughter no matter the cost, even if it meant giving his own life. This commitment was to safeguard their daughter in the event that she was ever in danger. Even though it was extremely painful for him to put her in such jeopardy, he was aware that this was their one and only opportunity to stay alive. At that same moment, the assassins unleashed a tremendous and whirling barrage of ghostly fire with the intention of destroying Evo and the girl where they stood. Evo was aware that if he did not stop this bomb, it would decimate everything within a wide radius. He had a firm grip on his greatsword and was getting ready to execute his most powerful maneuver, which was known as the Varosha Slash. Evo channeled all of his might into the motion of slashing his blade into the blazing fire. The spectral flames broke apart in front of the buzzing steel and quickly extinguished themselves. Evo's assault continued, ultimately severing one of the assassins in two and severing his body down the middle. The second assassin, however, was able to take over the body and powers of his dead friend before the separated pieces could fall to the ground. As a result of being corrupted and given more strength, the last remaining assassin morphed into a horrible two-headed creature that was encircled by foul purple-blue flames. The blonde girl instinctually drew back her boasting as soon as she saw the hideous thing that her father was now forced to face. An ethereal arrow that was glowing with the potential to cast a spell came to life. She let the arrow fly directly into the monster's heart, but it absorbed the magical projectile with no sign of being phased in the least. Evo and his daughter girded themselves for the next part of the struggle, certain that they would fight to the bitter end if that was what was required. The monster towered over them, looking like something out of a nightmare and intent on committing murder. The seasoned warrior Evo begged his daughter Neville to run away to a place of safety since the apostles of the Dark Guild were much too powerful for either of them to be able to take on alone. He cautioned her that none of her abilities would be useful against these cunning adversaries by saying that they would be immune to all of them. However, before Neville could raise any objections, one of the apostles pounded their fist into the ground, causing seismic shockwaves to be sent forth that split the ground beneath them. The apostles used the power of the impact to propel themselves towards Evo at breakneck speed, where they delivered a crushing strike that sent the warrior flying across the field of battle. He was knocked completely unconscious after colliding with a boulder, and blood began to drip from his mouth as a result of the impact. Father, Neville screamed, but Evo did not react in any way. Evo had persuaded his daughter to forsake him and save herself while she still had the chance, despite the fact that he was seriously injured and his greatsword had been shattered. However, the apostles did not waste any time and quickly merged together to form a terrible composite beast that had three veiled faces perched atop its leaking blue aura. The monster was much taller than Neville and her father, and its clawed hands were capable of unleashing fiery talents. Neville watched in shock as the unconscious Evo laid defenseless in front of the terrifying beast. She was aware that they were in their final minutes, but she suddenly had the realization that there was one more desperate deed that she could perform. 
Neville begged with the monster, saying that if they would just spare the life of her father, she would gladly accompany them on their journey. The masks appeared to be giving her proposal some thought, with the apostles of the Dark Guild muttering to one another within the ugly shell of their combined bodies. Neville held her breath as she waited, hoping against hope that they would acknowledge her sacrifice and save Evo's life. All that was left for her to do was to offer herself as a sacrifice and pray for a miracle, as she was willing to do anything in order to spare the life of her cherished father. But the apostles merely screamed menacingly at Neville and her father, making it abundantly plain that they intended to kill both of them. Neville's heart almost stopped as she heard their dreadful cries, and she accepted the fact that this was the end of everything. The monstrous beast had just turned around to deliver the last blow when it was suddenly brought to the ground by a massive force, which caused the surrounding area to shake violently. Neville was thrown backwards by the strong winds that were generated as a result of the hit. Neville was startled to see a massive woolly mammoth standing over her once she regained consciousness and saw that it had just finished annihilating the apostles of the Dark Guild. Neville was at a loss to decide whether or not this unexpected turn of events made her feel relieved or horrified. When Neville got a better look, she discovered that the mammoths had really had a small house perched on top of it. And as she peered still closer, she saw an immortal frog wearing a cloak and wielding a staff. He had been leading the mammoth the whole time. The croaking of the frog served as an alert that the threat had been eliminated. He inquired with his other traveling buddies about the best way to approach the defenseless humans. On top of the frog's own head was a house that was even smaller, and within that house was a robot dog whose name was Wang Tsai. Wang Tsai reassured the frog that the humans did not intend any harm against them and that they were in need of their assistance. When Neville finally opened her eyes, she found that she was in an environment that was utterly foreign to her. She was surrounded by cutting-edge technology but had no idea where she had been transferred to at the time. Neville was in a panic as she tried to figure out where her father may be because the last time she saw him, he was severely hurt and unconscious. If Evo does not receive treatment in a timely manner, he may very possibly perish from his wounds. Neville, confused and distressed, made a desperate plea for assistance. She held on to hope that whoever had rescued her from the apostles would also have compassion on her afflicted father. It was a matter of life and death for him. And if he did not make it out of this weird realm alive, Neville would be left completely on his own there. Neville, overcome with a sense of urgency, rushed out of the room in search of her father. However, as soon as she yelled his name, Evo appeared, magically whole and looking as ripped as ever. He appeared to be the image of health as he stood there grinning and flexing in the sunlight. This unexpected turn of events left Neville perplexed. When she had last seen him, Evo was bloodied and on the verge of passing out from his injuries. What factors might have contributed to such a remarkable turnaround in health? Evo was talking to Lee and the Demon Queen nearby at the same time. Lee remarked on Evo's amazing body and praised his great determination to staying in shape despite the fact that he was getting on in years. Evo emphasized that in order for a fighter to be successful in battle, it was essential for them to be physically prepared. He could not believe the culture of the warriors that existed in this new world because it was so alien to him. Exactly at that moment, the robot dog Wang Tsai ran up to Lee in an attempt to get the attention of his master. However, the unexpected commotion disturbed the demon queen, who continued to retain resentment for Wang Tsai as a result of their previous disagreements. She reacted angrily by kicking the dog away and yelling at him, wanting to know why he had allowed these strangers to into their home. Wang Tsai cowered and sobbed when confronted by the intimidating figure of the Demon Queen. He made an attempt to explain that the humans were in imminent danger and that he only wanted to be merciful to them. On the other hand, the Demon Queen was having none of it. She continued to scold the poor dog, who could only whimper and beg for mercy as she yelled at him. Lee was so taken aback by Evo's ripped physique that he couldn't wait to get his hands on the fierce warrior's biceps and compliment his toned body. Evo's ego was stroked by the attention. And as a result, he offered to demonstrate several poses in order to demonstrate his strength. After that, Evo triggered his ultimate 100% battle soul burning mode, at which point his garments began to tear away, revealing muscles that maximum flexed in a manner reminiscent of the judo master Rashi. Lee's eyes lit up like stars as he watched in total law as the elderly fighter underwent such a remarkable metamorphosis. He enthusiastically applauded for Evo as he moved through a variety of stances that were reminiscent of bodybuilders. During this time, Neville watched everything that was going on with a confused expression on her face. She couldn't help but wonder who these odd people were and why her previously seriously injured father was suddenly performing for them. The circumstance was completely peculiar and embarrassing to be in. When Evo at long last became aware of the presence of his daughter, he accepted that Neville had finally come to. 
he claimed that he was only trying to make their rescuers happy and show his appreciation for them saving their lives by doing what he did. The demon queen interposed herself between Evo's father and daughter before Evo could say anything further. She was very direct in her statement that since both were obviously doing well at this time, they should hurry up and leave. The demonic queen's tone did not allow for any kind of debate. Neville recoiled in fear in the presence of such an authoritative and mysterious figure. Neville was confronted directly by the demon queen, who informed her that she had already established her authority over Lee. The demon queen thrust her large bosom into Neville's armored front as a means of demonstrating her superiority. Neville recoiled in terror as she watched the attractive but domineering figure's hostile actions, telling her she was here first before she arrived. However, Lee quickly stepped in and intervened, touching the demon queen on the shoulder and pushing her to behave more civilly. He said that it was unusual for them to have visitors, thus it was proper for them to have polite conversation while drinking tea indoors. Although she continued to cast a murderous glare in Neville's direction, the demon queen eventually gave in. Inside, Lee apologized for the rudimentary hospitality and offered some tea before adding that this isolated home did not have much to offer. He urged the travelers to take advantage of the refreshments that were provided. Neville inquired as to if the tea was in possession of the miracle healing elixir that had successfully treated her father's wounds. Lee couldn't help but giggle because he knew that statement was hyperbolic. The tea did not contain any unique qualities on its own. Still irritated, the demon queen mumbled something about why Lee had let such feeble humans into their domain. Did he intend to perform some sick experiments on them? Was he implying that she, by herself, could not make him happy? After then, Evo began to describe his fuzzy memories of what happened after he lost consciousness while fighting the apostles. Lee was presented with their beaten forms by Wang Tsai, and he did nothing more than pour water into Evo's mouth. The seasoned fighter was instantaneously restored to full health and fortified as a result of this. Lee was the one who Evo credited with saving his life. He believed that without Lee's intervention, Evo would have passed away, leaving his daughter without a parent. Lee retorted in a humble manner, claiming that he had merely done what anyone else would have. But Neville and Evo were taken aback by Lee's unexplained ability to bring a guy back from the brink of death with just a drink of water. On the other hand, Lee politely insisted that there was no need to put on airs and that she should just drink. Neville and Evo both took a sip of the tea at the same time opening their eyes wide as a brilliant energy spread throughout their bodies. Neville and Eva were overtaken by joy, and they collapsed into a haystack to take in the heavenly atmosphere and soak in the rays of the sun. They were in a state of nirvana and could not contain their rejoicing after drinking the tea. They had never before experienced the wonderful flavor of that dish. They also saw a miraculous improvement in their magic talents as a result of drinking the tea. Neville moved up one level from being a one-star mage to becoming a one-star archmage, while Evo advanced one level from being a three-star archmage to being a four-star archmage. Even Neville's mother, who had finally come to, sprouted hairy ears, which was evidence of her own newly discovered power. After partaking of such ambrosia, the problems of the outside world appeared to be of very little consequence to Neville and Evo as they returned to the present. When Lee saw that their cups were empty, he offered them additional tea, but Evo respectfully declined his offer. The seasoned warrior believed that Lee had already shown the overwhelming kindness that was proper for a man of God. It was difficult for the proud warrior Evo to accept such hospitality from someone who appeared to have boundless power, but he eventually admitted that he could hardly endure Lee's generosity. However, Lee seemed unconcerned about Evo's distress and explained that he was pleased to help fellow travelers in need regardless of their rank. Despite the Demon Queen's apparent continued mistrust, Lee and Wang Tsi had behaved in a friendly manner with them. Both Neville and Evo harbored the hope that one day, should their lives ever cross again, they would be able to repay that compassion. They made preparations to leave this strange new place for the time being, feeling fortified and enlightened by Lee's compassion. The warmth from the tea lingered within them, igniting a spark of hope. As the demon Queen Elizabeth had seized ownership of everything else in the house, Lee was left without any better drinks or snacks to offer. He deeply regretted this fact. Because he did not want to make her angry, he dared not take any of it back. Elizabeth insisted that everything was hers and that they should not touch any of it. She claimed ownership of everything. Lee once more expressed his regret and said that he prioritized Elizabeth's peace of mind over successfully hosting the event. Lee then asked about the circumstances that led to the travelers being attacked once the subject was changed. Evo related that the reason was because Neville had elven blood running through his veins. In elf culture, intermarriage is strictly banned but her mother had been an elf saintess and had given birth to Neville after falling in love with Evo. 
Li knew that because Neville was of mixed heritage, she was a target for being a rebel against elven traditions. Elizabeth commented in a flippant manner that such discriminatory customs will become extinct once she was the sole ruler of the world. Ebo continued by saying that he had fled into hiding with Neville after his wife had returned to the Holy Land of the Elves after she had visited there. However, the elves ultimately became aware of her existence and dispatched operatives to retrieve them from their hiding place. Ebo's wife had offered herself up as a sacrifice in the hopes of persuading the elves to spare their lives. This time, it was dark mages of the demon realm working on behalf of their guild that were chasing after them. When the demon world was mentioned, Lee went to Elizabeth and asked, could she be connected to it? The thought that the demon queen had any kind of relationship with such despicable beings caused the demon queen to sneer. The demon queen became enraged at Lee's insinuation and demanded to know what he meant by what he said. Lee was quick to retract his statement and offer an apology for the careless comment he had made. In an effort to defuse the tension, Lee asked his guests, in a reassuring tone, for additional information about this wicked guild from the demon realm and the reason they were kidnapping elves. Evo elucidated that the objective of the guild was to reawaken the fabled demon queen Elizabeth, who was once responsible for bringing the entire globe under her rule. They were looking for a variety of resources, including elves, in order to conduct their sinister experiments on humans. When the demon queen heard this, Lee gave her an amused look, which only served to further inflame her fury. In her rage, she seized Lee and reprimanded him for his rash assumptions, telling him that of course she was the real Elizabeth, and not some imposter who they intended to bring back to life. As they continued to argue, Lee, who was becoming flustered, emphasized that he had never had any doubts about her identity and begged her to calm down. Neville turned to her father for clarity after being perplexed by the peculiar relationship between the two of them. Evo hushed her and admonished her to behave appropriately while their hosts argued. The demon queen wondered how the people of the planet could believe that she was dead when she was standing right in front of them. Evo said that Elizabeth had not been seen for the past 500 years, and if she were still alive, there is little doubt that she would have seized control a long time ago. This information shook up Lee who stutteringly explained that Elizabeth had only been living with him for a little over a year, and not for centuries. Inquisitive at this point, the demon queen avidly inquired as to the details of the reports concerning the supposed circumstances of her demise many years ago. Evo dithered since he wasn't sure whether or not the story would inflame the volatile demon queen even further. Neville related the story with some reluctance, explaining that the great hero had eventually triumphed against Elizabeth after an epic struggle that lasted for an entire month but it had cost him his life. The Demon Queen's rule came to an end 500 years ago when the two of them were destroyed by each other. Elizabeth became infuriated when she heard this made-up story. She conjured up a nightmare realm full of floating skulls and demanded to know how they could get away with spreading such lies while her eyes were flashing scarlet. The terrified Neville and Evo instantly changed their stories and confirmed that Elizabeth had been telling the truth. In an effort to lessen the impact of the news, Lee remarked that he must be the mythical hero from the story because his computer had identified him as such. This took Neville and Evo by surprise, and they gaped at each other in disbelief when they realized that the modest Lee could be the legendary warrior. Neville and Evo were taken aback when they learned that Lee and the woman who stood in front of them were, in fact, the legendary hero and demon queen respectively. As they passed out from the overwhelming nature of the situation, comedic blood spurred spraying out of their noses. Their tongues were foaming, and their minds were reeling as they tried to comprehend how they could be dining with the living manifestations of such significant historical legends. It was inexplicable by any standard of logic or reason. During the time that they were out, Elizabeth cast a suspicious glance in Lee's his defeated slave and taking terrible pleasure in her incarceration. Elizabeth pounded the table in exasperation when she finally came to, and was able to shake off her paranoid images. She'd had enough of these stupid folks and their lies by the time she reached that point. The demon queen turned on her heel and stormed out of the room, declaring that she would not waste another minute of her time with such disgraceful company. She blushed furiously, thinking Lee was pushing boundaries with his arrogance. Slamming the broken door, Elizabeth decided Lee was far too annoying for her to endure tonight. Meanwhile, Evo asked Lee bluntly what he planned to do with them now. Lee laughed nervously, admitting he needed time to think things through after Elizabeth's dramatic exit. Lee reasoned that Elizabeth must have broken time itself to arrive in this era. That would explain the 500-year gap since the age thought her dead. Until the temporal disruption stabilized, time would remain out of sync. Later that night as the moon shone down, Neville whispered to her father that they never expected the infamous demon queen had given everything up for love, just as he did. 
but Evo hushed her. They could not compare themselves to the likes of Lee and Elizabeth. All they could do was wait and hopefully spared their insignificant lives. They shivered, afraid of displeasing the mighty hero. But Neville wondered, if Lee meant them harm, why save them at all? Her father cautioned that to beings like Lee and Elizabeth, humans were mere ants to toy with on a whim. With but a sip of tea, Lee had nearly destroyed them despite his congeniality. Their fate rested entirely on his mercurial moods. Evo advised Neville to stay on good terms with their hosts, since currying favor could mean the difference between life and death. Just then, they heard Lee's footsteps outside as he noted they were still awake. Neville froze in fear, dreading what the hero might do. But Lee just chuckled, telling them not to be afraid, and ask Evil and Burrs that since they are still not asleep so late. So what are they doing this late? Evil get too scared to see Le Ping like that she thought this is the real end of her life. But Le Ping turns on the light and asks that if they haven't slept yet how about playing cards? Burrs have a confused expression on his face as he don't know what playing cards means. Then in the light of a candle they all sit on the floor to play cards. Le Ping explain all the rules of cards to them. In to to confirm he asks if they understand everything. Burr's reply that he understand roughly. Evil was thinking that as her dad told her because. This is Le Ping's test for Evil and Burr's to decide whether to kill them or not. Le Ping thought that if they understand 50% of what he said then it's good. He said he'll start dealing cards then. Evil had a question to ask Le Ping but she hesitated to ask. But at the end she couldn't control her desire to question and she asked Le Ping. What's the name of this game? She asked it because there's a sinister aura emanating from these cards that she don't understand. Le Ping was surprised by her question as he was not expecting her to ask it. That question really stumps her at the moment. He thought that landlord card is probably not easy to understand for the people of this world. So he come up with a new name decide to call it Dragon Fight. He chose that name because it was cool but that cool name scared the shit out of evil and burrs. Both of them were to shock to hear that name. Elizabeth who left before and angry couldn't sleep so he comes to check. She used her high level magic concealment technique to part her body and soul. Now she was in form of soul so others cannot see her and she can pass through anything. When she was roaming around the house she hear that Le Ping is playing dragon fight so she stopped to look. Le Ping explained what the dragon fight means to them. He told them that both of them are brave heroes who have to join forces to defeat the dragon. They can decide whether to be the hero or dragon according to the cards they draw. Whisper to evil that as he expected before this sure is a test for them. In both father and daughter's vision Le Ping looks like villain. Le Ping start dealing cards and he warns them to think carefully before they choose. Le Ping pick up his cards and told them to also look at their cards. Burrs whispers to Evil that. There's no room for hesitation now. He asked her to take her cards. Evil was scared to even pick up those mysterious cards. Just when she touched those cards she felt like she have suddenly teleported in a demonic hell. Burrs was shocked he thought is this another realm. Evil was shaking in fear. She realized that it's not good because just picking up the cards drained all her magic power. She c-o-u-l-d and even move her body so she look at her dad and said sorry because she can't help him more. Burrs told her that it's okay and asked her to leave the rest to her dad. On the one side it was life and dead situation and on the other hand for Le Ping it was just like playing normal cards. He asked Burrs if Burrs want to be a dragon. While looking at his cards Le Ping thought that although he don't have many big cards, it's still a very good set he also has big and small kings. So it's not bad it worth a shot. Burrs and Evil reply that they don't want to be a dragon. Both of them have some good cards but they don't know it. Le Ping thought that if he get another 4 and 2 he'll have a winning hand. He again asked them if they are sure they don't want to be dragon. What Le Ping means by being dragon is if they want to change cards. But both Evil and Burrs deny because they don't understand it. Le Ping said he won't be polite then and he pick up a card. But when he turns the card they are not that good which could be seen by Le Ping's face. Both Evil and Burrs started shaking in fear thinking is Le Ping dissatisfied with their performance. Le Ping said he'll play first. And he played an 8. It was now Burrs turn. Burrs thought as long as they pass this test. Le Ping will spare them. So they can't give up now but when he pick up a card he suddenly feel pain in his heart. Every time they play a card it's at the cost of their life force. But Burrs endured it and serves a J. Burrs was shaking in pain when Evil saw him like that she gets scared. But Burrs told her that he is fine so leave everything to him. Scared Evil passed this round and then it was Le Ping's turn. He looks at his cards and thought that besides the royal flush, a straight from 7 to Q3 4 seconds with a pair of 5s, only 10 and Jer left. Should he break the a pair or not? If he do fail I'll play a 2 and he'll be at a disadvantage. Le Ping was thinking too much and was getting too nervous. Le Ping said forget it he also pass. Burrs was too shocked to hear that he just pick up a card and get his sucked of his life force and now he have to do it again. 
He asked Le Ping he really not want it. Le Ping smiled and said no. Now all the pressure was on Burrs. He thought Le Ping is deliberately making him continue to play cards. That will continue to consuming his life force. In this situation he have to get rid of all his cards as soon as possible. Burrs directly show his 8 cards 2 queen 3 6 and 3 7. He said that according to the rules, this combination of cards should be called Flying Dragon. But when he put those cards his heart skipped for a second. This move of his consumed large amount of his life force but he endured. The price for this move was Bira 1 leg. Now he knows that the bigger the cards he play the bigger the price will be. But what he didn't expect was that a huge flying dragon made of spiritual energy could come out from his move. Both Evil and Burrs were to shock to see it. Dragon start to prepare his attack on Le Ping. He attack on Le Ping. Elizabeth watching everything from sidelines. After attacking on Le Ping's spiritual dragon disappear. Burrs got really scared. Because it turns out that playing a combination of cards leads to a losing situation. Burrs say he doomed. He just offended the legendary hero. He will dead this time. But Li Peng is fine he don't get any scratch from dragon attack. Le Ping say to Burrs he play really good. Burrs don't believe in eyes. After dragon attack Li Ping is fine. Le Ping smile and say he don't want it. He can continue. Burrs hands are shaking. He say he understand. He play his card A3. He will say he pass. Then this time is Le Ping turn. He play his card. Both Burrs and Evil say they can't beat it. Le Pin smile and start to prepare a powerful move. Suddenly they surrounding by a powerful blue light. Burrs shocked to see that. A sky destroying wave come out behind from Li Ping. Wave attack on Burrs and Evil. Burrs say to his daughter Evil hang in there. But Evil is worried about his dad. But sky destroying wave swallow both of them. After surviving form Li Ping attack. Burrs and Evil say that. They can't play anymore. Then Le Ping start to prepare his next move and say next is three of a kind with a pair. Horse car come out from air with soldier and prepared to attack on Burrs and Evil. Burrs got really scared and say he can't beat him. But Evil say he wants to try. He prepared his cards. But Burrs is against the decision. He say if you want to play he have to pay the price with his life force. Evil don't listen and say he can't hide Bindi. He also want to protect his father. After saying that he also prepare the same move as Le Ping. Then we show two horse car with soldiers start to fight each other. Both of the carriages collided with each other, resulting in a huge blast of spiritual energy. Li Ping's horse carriage emerged unscathed, leaving Burrs shocked. He looked at Evil and asked her if she was okay. Evil replied that she was fine. Li Ping told Burrs that it's inappropriate. Burrs must protect his teammates, even if he has to use up his own cards. Li Ping emphasized that determination is the most important thing. Burrs looked at his fingers, which had been drained of life force, and wondered, what is determination? Li Ping picked up his card and laughed because it was too late for Burrs and Evil. Burrs and Evil were scared to see Le Ping smile like that. Elizabeth was also frightened because such an ominous premonition was really bad. Le Ping picked two cards and slammed them on the ground. His two cards were clowns. Suddenly, a crack appeared in the space, and Evil and Burrs were shocked to see it. From that crack, a hand that looked like a clown's hand emerged, followed by the clown himself, who smiled at the scared evil and burrs. Elizabeth was surprised to see that clown and wanted to ask Le Ping what this summoned entity was. The clown is a Supreme King level 3 star demon god. Both evil and burrs were shaking in fear when the clown looked at them and smiled. The clown extended his hand toward them but stopped before touching them, making a BTS love sign. He was just scaring evil and burrs because he's a clown. However, when the clown felt Elizabeth's presence, he looked at her and laughed. He asked her what she was peeking at and summoned a knife in his hand. While licking the knife, he warned Elizabeth to be careful and said he would kill her. Elizabeth was angry and asked the clown if he knew who he was looking down on. Elizabeth used her power to stop the clown. She was scared because, during this time, she had put down her dignity and accepted feeding, finally reaching the three-star demon god level. But Le Ping could summon a three-star demon god casually. Evil was exhausted and scared, while Burrs started vomiting blood, losing his life force rapidly. His body didn't have enough energy for him to sit properly. Burrs put down the cards and tried to get himself together. Le Ping was surprised to see him and asked if Burrs was okay. To Le Ping, it seemed that Burrs's injury hadn't healed yet, leading to him vomiting blood. However, something else caught Le Ping's attention, Burrs's cards. Le Ping realized that with Burrs's cards, he could have won a long time ago. It turned out that Burrs had been letting Le Ping play with him. Le Ping had been ignorant and thought he was very powerful, disturbing other people's rest. Le Ping mixed up all the cards, and just as he did that, the three-star demon god disappeared with them. Le Ping collected all the cards and told Burrs that he had lots of fun. 
He asked Burrs to go to bed early, but Ping left in disappointment and Burrs and Evil finally relaxed. Burrs said that the legendary brave man is really unpredictable. Evil couldn't believe that they were still alive. Elizabeth was very angry and said it's outrageous. Playing cards with these two humans is a lie. Le Ping just took the opportunity to beat up Elizabeth. Then, the next day, Burrs and Evil were ready to leave. When they were standing in front of Le Ping's house to say goodbye, Le Ping asked Burrs if he really didn't want to stay for two more days. The fruits Le Ping planted were about to be harvested. Burrs greeted Le Ping and told him that they couldn't disturb Elizabeth and Le Ping anymore. Le Ping was so kind that their daughter and father would never forget him. Le Ping got nervous to see a big man greeting him like that. He said it's okay and told Burrs not to take it too seriously. Burrs assured Le Ping that they wouldn't talk nonsense after they left. Evil thanked Le Ping because he had given them a precious gift. Le Ping told her it's not a big deal, it's just ordinary barley tea, so don't dislike it. Le Ping suddenly grabbed Burrs' hand and gave him something as a souvenir. What Le Ping gave him were those cards from the previous night. Burrs was surprised to receive those cards. Le Ping told Burrs to take them because his poker skills were so bad that he wasn't suitable at all. Le Ping was crying while saying that. Elizabeth also came there. Burrs was so shocked and scared to see her. She moved her mouth but without saying anything. She told both Evil and Burrs to hurry up and get out of this place. When Elizabeth said that, both of them ran away as fast as they could. Le Ping wasn't even able to say goodbye to them. He was confused as to why they were running away so fast. When they left, Elizabeth went back inside the house. She said now everything was back to normal and asked Le Ping to go cook for her. On the other hand, Burrs ran too fast with Evil. Evil was about to vomit and she asked her father to please stop. Burrs stopped. He was all exhausted and scared. He was scared because there was first the game test of the legendary Brave and then there was the threat of the Demon King. Last night when Le Ping left them, Elizabeth came to them and struck at them with her bare hands. Although she didn't kill them, it left some kind of ancient text on their necks. Elizabeth ordered them to leave immediately the next day and not to reveal any news about her and the legendary brave anywhere. Scared, Burrs and Evil could only nod in agreement. Elizabeth looked at them angrily and told them that if they had any idea that went against her will, the curse mark on their necks would make them fall to the ground immediately. Burrs told Evil that the truth of history is that the demon queen, who ruled the world, and Le Ping, the legendary hero, were tired of the strife in the world and didn't want to be disturbed anymore. While walking, Eva looked around and told her dad that this place looked a bit familiar. Burrs looked around and was shocked. He asked Evil how they had run this far. Wang Kai was looking at them from afar. He sent Evil and Burrs back here so they wouldn't bother his master and that fierce woman, Elizabeth, anymore. It wasn't Burrs who had run that fast. In reality, Wang Kai had taken them that fast using his rocket without their knowledge. This was the same place where Wang Kai had saved Burrs and Evil before, and the bodies of the Dark Guild Apostles were still there. Burrs told Evil that there should be various high-level monsters appearing nearby, so they should leave as soon as possible. Suddenly, Wang Kai detected that something was approaching. But Wang Kai thought, who cares? Last time he had been beaten up by that fierce woman, and he wasn't going to do it again. He went inside a teleportation portal and disappeared. Suddenly, in front of Evil and Burrs, something appeared. One of them was flying in the air, and the others were standing on the ground. The one flying in the air made a Jin Jin sound and they all looked too fearsome. Burrs was shocked to see them because they were the Great Apostle and the Dark Guild's Apostles. Evil was scared to hear the Great Apostle's name. The monster flying in the air was the Dark Guild's Great Apostle, a level 2 star Great Demon Spirit. The others were Dark Guild's Apostles, ranging from level 2 stars to 4 stars in Devil Rank. Burrs was shocked to see them, as the difference in strength was too big. Evil asked her father to let her leave with the Apostles and urged him to get out of there. Evil herself was an archer level 1 star great magician. Burrs realized the true power of determination in card playing and summoned the arrow god with the cards Le Ping had given him. The arrow god resembled Evil's mother. With a burst of spiritual energy, the arrow god wielded a bow and arrow. Burrs asked the arrow god to play the cards, and the spiritual energy transformed into a powerful bow and arrow. The arrow god aimed and shot at the Dark Guild's apostles. The arrows destroyed the ground and struck the apostles one by one, eliminating the lower level ones. Even the great apostle couldn't stop the power of the arrows and was killed. Afterward, the cards returned to their place, and the arrow god merged back with nature. Burrs, exhausted from the immense power he had harnessed, realized the importance of determination as the key to unlocking the card's strength. He jokingly mentioned that he might need to change his profession. 
In the end, a new profession, the card master, was born in the brave continent. Burrs and Evil were still in shock from witnessing the destructive power of the cards. They had overcome the Dark Guild's apostles, which was a remarkable achievement. A week later, Lin Ping was eating watermelon in his garden and thought, The magical world is so amazing. My hybrid fruit breeding method has been very successful. But without anyone to share it, the joy of the harvest always feels like it's missing something. In his world, there are various races, including demons, warriors, and elves. But Lin Ping originally thought that he was satisfied with peaceful farming. However, when he had everything and came into contact with the outside world, his heart began to grow restless, and he wanted to explore it. People are like this, they get one thing and want two. But he felt so weak that he decided to forget about it. Suddenly, a smoke emerged out of nowhere, and it was Elizabeth. He asked Lin Ping, what's on your mind? Lin Ping replied that he wanted to go out and see something. But he said, forget it because I'm too weak. Elizabeth smiled and said, so you're finally eager to leave this place. He asked Lin Ping to come with him for a trip. Elizabeth thought that the outside world was incomparable to Lin Ping, but his attitude was too arrogant. Lin Ping got really excited and said to Elizabeth, if it's really okay with you, it's a different story if I have the protection of the Demon Queen. Elizabeth responded with an attitude, stop talking nonsense, change your clothes. After changing their clothes, Elizabeth complimented Lin Ping on his cooking and sewing skills, saying that they were very impressive. Lin Ping replied, these are my specialties. The robot dog also wanted to go with them. Elizabeth twisted his finger and a magical door appeared in front of him. Elizabeth explained that they would use this transfer door to reach the nearest town. Lin Ping was really surprised by Elizabeth's skills. As Elizabeth walked toward the gate, Lin Ping asked him a few questions. Lin Ping said that after they go out, Elizabeth shouldn't leave him alone, no matter what. He also emphasized that Elizabeth had to keep his emotions stable and act low-key. Lin Ping made it clear that without his permission, Elizabeth couldn't leave and warned him not to use magic recklessly, as it would ruin the fun of experiencing ordinary people. Elizabeth was really angry with Lin Ping but he managed to control his anger and told Lin Ping that he understood. Lin Ping asked, After seeing the changes outside, will you come back with me? Lin Ping was concerned that without the protection barrier of the novice village, he would become the food of the demon beasts in minutes. Elizabeth replied, Of course, but not until I've officially defeated you, the evil hero. The outside world means nothing to me. Lin Ping was really happy, but Elizabeth added that he had to agree to one request from him. Lin Ping felt nervous and didn't know what request Elizabeth had in mind. Elizabeth came close to Lin Ping and said, When we return, I want you to make me a super deluxe assorted fruit pudding. Lin Ping was shocked and thought, Just pudding. Elizabeth asked if there was a problem. Lin Ping assured Elizabeth that he didn't have any problem with making pudding for him when they returned. And he said, Let's go. The robot dog was left behind and felt really sad. After traveling through the portal gate, Lin Ping was pleasantly surprised to see a beautiful city after so long. The city is named Boaster Town, where humans and monsters coexist without any problems. After seeing this, Lin Ping exclaimed, This place is amazing. It's like stepping into another world. Elizabeth also observed the city after a long time. Lin Ping asked Elizabeth to check out an equipment shop. He noticed they were selling ingredients, but he wondered, Isn't this just regular pork? Lin Ping was genuinely excited about visiting the outside world after a long time. Elizabeth remarked, 500 years have passed, and the changes in the outside world don't seem that significant. Lin Ping agreed, adding, it doesn't seem as chaotic as Uncle Bess said. Elizabeth smiled and explained, that's because I established a strong foundation during my rule. You see, in the original world, various forces were in conflict, and the situation was chaotic. Elizabeth used his absolute strength to suppress them all and establish a set of rules where everyone is equal. So, the one who really saved the world was Elizabeth, not Lin Ping, the so-called legendary hero. Elizabeth was really angry because Lin Ping escaped without hearing his words and said that Lin Ping is nonsense. He didn't even acknowledge Elizabeth's past achievements. Lin Ping visited a small stall where a little girl was selling cute bunny dolls. By the way, her name is Annie. After closely examining the bunny dolls, Lin Ping commented, So delicate. The stitching details are very well done. He asked the little girl if he made them, and the little girl replied that she was the one who made these dolls. She asked Lin Ping if he liked them, and she could offer them to him at a lower price. Suddenly, a voice came out from nowhere and exclaimed, Who gave him permission to set up a stall here? He's Demon Pig. Demon Pig kicked over the little girl's stall and seized her hand, proclaiming, His church owes our gang protection money, 
and hasn't paid it yet. How dare he set up a stall in our place? Annie's younger siblings were scared and pleaded with Demon Pig to spare their sister. Demon Pig lifted the little girl into the air, and she defiantly retorted, You never protected us. Why should we pay you protection money? Demon Pig laughed and responded, You're an idiot. Since last month, this street has fallen under the territory of our beast gang. If they want to survive here, they must provide monthly tributes. However, the little girl remained unconvinced and boldly declared, That's not true. The church belongs to the nun. When the nun comes back, you'll be in trouble. Demon Pig scoffed, saying, You're clueless. You don't understand the situation at all, do you? Fine, I'll drive you orphans away today and tear down that broken church. Lin Ping watched everything unfold from the sidelines, growing increasingly angry. He implored Demon Pig to stop, and Demon Pig, with cold eyes, retorted, What the hell do you want to do? Lin Ping was really scared, not knowing what to say. Elizabeth stood by, pondering, Does Lin Ping want to toy with these ordinary people again? Lin Ping then asked Elizabeth for help in this situation, but Elizabeth turned his head away and told Lin Ping that he didn't want to help. Lin Ping should solve his own problem. Demon Pig grew increasingly angry with Lin Ping and asked about his intentions. Lin Ping was genuinely scared, feeling helpless as Elizabeth offered no assistance. Suddenly, he had a great idea and shouted, Everyone, this pig-headed man is bullying a little girl. Come and condemn him. However, everyone ignored Lin Ping and did not want to get involved in the matter. Demon Pig laughed and remarked, You don't really think anyone will come out to help you, do you? Everyone on this street knows our beast gang. Demon Pig looked at Lin Ping and remarked, Look at your clothes, you're a foreigner from the south, right? The girl next to you isn't bad. Lin Ping suggested, Let's talk things over. I have some local specialties in my backpack. I can share them with all of you. However, Demon Pig declined and ordered his men to beat up Lin Ping and take the woman back to their gang to lock her up. Elizabeth became really angry and asked Demon Pig, Do you really think anyone is qualified to imprison me? You've really stepped on the tiger's tail. Suddenly, the weather changed, and lightning appeared in the sky, frightening everyone. They all gazed at the sky in confusion, and Demon Pig's whole body shook. He asked, Why did the weather suddenly change like that? As everyone continued to watch the sky, Lin Ping urged Elizabeth not to take any drastic action, emphasizing that it might destroy the whole town. He asked Elizabeth to calm down and explain that they should just scare them. He wouldn't actually fight ordinary people like this, would he? Elizabeth assured Lin Ping that he would spare them this time because of Lin Ping's request. The little girl noticed Elizabeth's powerful magic and thought, that sister's magic is so powerful. The sky returned to normal and the rain began. Demon Pig remained bewildered by what had just occurred. Demon Pig's body is shaking with fear, and he questions Elizabeth and Lin Ping about their reasons for supporting the church orphans. He's perplexed by a sudden sense of nervousness when facing them. Lin Ping, realizing negotiations might not work, proposes a deal to Demon Pig. He suggests paying for protection, asking how much money Demon Pig wants. Demon Pig, eager for an opportunity, nervously quotes 10 gold coins for two months. Elizabeth, also hearing their conversation from the sidelines, laughs and says, a mere 10 gold coins, making a big fuss. Utterly foolish, Lin Ping gets really surprised. He comes close to Elizabeth and asks, by the way, Elizabeth, you must have a lot of gold coins, right? Elizabeth gets really happy after Lin Ping praises him. He says that he has so many treasures that he can't count them all. After hearing this, Lin Ping gets really surprised. He asks Elizabeth, how about lending me some? I'll sell the vegetables from my home and pay you back later. However, Elizabeth is not happy with Lin Ping's idea. He doesn't want to sell his precious vegetables for just mere 10 gold coins. He says Lin Ping is an idiot, asking to use his food to exchange for those useless things. That won't do. Besides, he didn't bring any gold coins when he came to find Lin Ping. After hiring Lin Ping, he hits his head on the ground, getting really surprised. He doesn't know what's going to happen to him. Demon Pig calls his men and asks Lin Ping and Elizabeth if they're going to pay the money or not. Lin Ping is really nervous. He scratches his head with his hand and says he doesn't have any gold coins. He asks if he can use the local products in his bag to make up for it. Demon Pig gets really angry. He says to Lin Ping and Elizabeth that if they are playing with him, he won't listen to their nonsense anymore. He orders his men to kill Lin Ping and capture Elizabeth. Suddenly, a pouch filled with gold coins comes out of nowhere and hits Demon Pig in the face. Demon Pig is really angry. He asks who threw this bag on his face and threatens to kill them. However, he notices something shiny in the pouch. After closely looking at the pouch, he sees it's filled with gold coins and gets really surprised. 
Then we see a man. His half body is human and the other half is a horse. He asks Demon Pig to stop harassing his friend and leave as soon as he gets the money. His name is Hawthorne Tharis. After seeing him, Demon Pig says it turns out he's from the Sword Saint Guild, Thunder Seabakthorn. After realizing that he is a really powerful and famous adventurer, Demon Pig says he will give him some face. After getting the money, Demon Pig says to his men, let's go. But before he goes, he gives a warning to the little girl that he won't be this lucky next month. After Demon Pig leaves, Lin Ping helps the little girl. The little girl thanks Lin Ping for helping her in this situation when no one else wanted to. Lin Ping is really happy. After seeing that she is okay, Lin Ping also thanks the adventurer for helping them and offers some fruits. If he doesn't mind, please accept it. With a humble smile, Thunder says to Lin Ping, You don't need to worry, it's a trivial matter. He turns to Elizabeth and says, If you're willing, I'd like you to partner with me on something. It's just my opinion, but I think this guy doesn't have any good thoughts about Elizabeth. Anyway, let's continue our story. The little girl adjusts his glasses and asks, What do you mean, partner? What can we help you with? He says with a suspicious smile, Let's go somewhere else to talk. If this works out, I think it can also solve our financial problems. Elizabeth folds his hands and says that he is not interested, asking Lin Ping to go. Lin Ping begs Elizabeth not to leave, emphasizing that he just helped them out. Let's at least see what they have to say, okay. Little girl younger siblings, asks him, Sister Annie, are you going out? They are worried about their sister because if she gets in trouble again because of them. Little girl Annie assures them that they don't have to worry, he will be safe. He asks them to go back to the church first, he'll be back soon. When they are about to enter the pub, Horseman asks them, Once you enter the tavern, stay close to him. You don't know what will happen. When they enter the pub, everyone stares at Elizabeth and Lin Ping. One of the men asks Elizabeth, Hey, babe, the men around you look like trash. Want to come over here instead? Lin Ping and little girl know that if they do this, Elizabeth will kill everyone here. After hearing this, Elizabeth's eyes are glowing red. He is really angry and releases his killing intent, asking that man to say that again. After seeing Elizabeth's killing intent, the man who commented on Elizabeth gets really scared. Their whole bodies are shaking with fear. Elizabeth turns his head to Lin Ping and says that it's all his fault for insisting on coming to this lousy place and wasting his time. Elizabeth is really angry at Lin Ping. Lin Ping is nervous and says to Elizabeth that they're already here, so why don't they go in? Horseman asks them to go this way, please, into this private room, and there won't be any outsiders to bother them. Horseman opens the door and says that they are back. Then we see a bunch of cute girls surrounding the horseman. They say, Master, you're finally back. We were so worried about you. We wanted to go out and look for you. Please take us with you next time. Horseman turns his head to Lin Ping and says that he forgot to mention he has a few wives here too. After seeing this, Lin Ping gets really surprised. He doesn't have any words to say. He asks him, you have four wives. I knew from the start this man was suspicious. He has four wives, and here I am, single. Anyway, let's continue our story. Horseman starts pouring tea for everyone and says, let me introduce them to you. First of all, this one next to him is Gasha. Her profession is a shield warrior. Then there's the assassin Lolo, and there's Glee, a mage. And lastly, there's Jelia, she's an amazing elven archer. After seeing someone from the elf race, he says he met a girl with elf bloodline a while ago. Elizabeth asks Horseman to stop with the small talk. It's a waste of time. They need to leave. One of the girls says to Horseman about Elizabeth. What's the deal with this woman? Her attitude is really annoying. Elizabeth is really angry. He says this is how this queen is. Do they have any opinions? The cat girl says it's really funny. She even calls herself a queen. She asks her master if this woman's brain is okay. The elf girl looks at Elizabeth and says that, after looking at the shape of her ears, she's probably a lowly half-breed with a bit of elven blood. What's she doing in front of me? After hearing this, Elizabeth gets really angry. He says to the elf girl, if he insists on bringing destruction upon herself, then don't blame this queen. If he gets killed. After hearing this, Lin Ping knows that if he doesn't claim Elizabeth, there will be a disaster. Lin Ping gets the pudding from his bag and gives it to Elizabeth. When Elizabeth shows the pudding in Lin Ping's hands, his anger is gone, and he gets really happy. After seeing Elizabeth's happy face, Lin Ping feels relieved and says, luckily, he was prepared. After Elizabeth gets claimed, Lin Ping starts his conversation with the horseman. He says, actually, they come from a very distant and nameless tribe to travel here. Elizabeth is the princess of that tribe, and I am her servant, Le Ping. After hearing Lin Ping's words, the cat girl says, no wonder her behavior and manners are so strange. She is a tribal princess who has never seen the world. 
Another girl also comments, his name is Elizabeth, right? He's from that uncivilized tribe that worships the demon queen in the demon realm, huh? That's why his behavior is rude and he is uncivilized. Lin Ping puts his finger on his lips and asks for silence, mentioning that they will hear them. He also explains that it's Elizabeth's first time out, and she's still adapting to the cultural differences. Lin Ping thinks this explanation should make sense, hoping they won't ask any more questions about Elizabeth. The horseman claims everyone and asks them to get back to business. He expresses his desire to invite Elizabeth and Lin Ping to join his team in exploring a dungeon for treasure. However, the horseman is uncertain about the terrifying demonic power emanating from Elizabeth earlier wondering if she might be from the demon race. Lin Ping then asks the horseman about the treasure dungeon, seeking a more detailed explanation. He also turns to the little girl Annie, asking if she knows what a treasure dungeon is. Annie answers Lin Ping's question and explains that treasure dungeons are said to be magical spaces set up by ancient powerful beings to hide valuable things. These dungeons are usually well hidden and very dangerous places. After hearing Annie's explanation, Lin Ping gets an idea of what the treasure dungeons look like. The horseman mentions that he also spent a lot of effort to get news of this treasure dungeon. However, the condition to open the barrier is that the number of people has to reach eight. If there aren't enough people, they can't enter the dungeon. Le Ping says that's why he is looking for us to make up the numbers. Little girl Annie starts counting to see how many people they are. After she finishes, she starts crying because she is the eighth member of this party. She asks the horseman with a crying face if she can not go with them. Le Ping is really confused. After seeing Annie, he asks her what's wrong. Treasure dungeons seem to be precious, shouldn't he be happy to go? Elizabeth doesn't pay any attention to them. He is eating his pudding without any worry. Little girl Annie turns her head to Le Ping's side and says, Brother Le Ping, you don't know. Treasure dungeons are usually very difficult, and he is just a mere four-star magician. If he goes, he will probably die. People don't know how the power level works in the demon world. Let me explain this for you. There are 10 types of magic power level references. Magician, Mage, Grand Mage, Demon Spirit, Great Demon Spirit, Demon Sect, Demon Sovereign, Demon King, Demon God. Magic power level can be used as one of the reference standards for strength. Le Ping scratches his head and tells Annie that he doesn't know much about magic levels in this world. The horseman reassures Le Ping, saying he just needs to help him meet the number of people condition. The battle inside will be left to them. The treasure he'll get in the end will not be less than theirs, estimating at least a few tens of thousands of gold coins. One of the horsemen's wives mentions that their master single-handedly repelled several dark apostles who wanted to take Jellia a few days ago, demonstrating his strength. Little girl Annie gets really happy hearing this, realizing they can get tens of thousands of gold coins from the dungeon. With that amount of money, they can solve the church's financial problems without any issues. Le Ping asks Elizabeth to help them make up the numbers to solve their financial problems. Elizabeth, while eating his pudding, doesn't pay attention to Le Ping's words and says, Fine, I don't have any problem. Please don't bother the queen from enjoying the delicious pudding. After convincing them, the horseman asks one of his wives to get the crystal ball. She takes the crystal ball from his bag and places it on the table. Le Ping is really surprised after seeing this crystal ball, not knowing its purpose. The horseman explains that he will show Le Ping how to use it. Placing his hand on the crystal ball, a bright light comes out, and he says it's Glee's magic measurements crystal ball. Putting his hand on it will measure his magic level. He takes his hand off the crystal ball, and his magic level shows on the crystal ball, registering at 8769. After seeing this, Le Ping and little girl Annie are surprised. Le Ping asks if this is Glee's magic measurements crystal ball, and they just need to put their hand on it to measure their magic level. It turns out to be a crystal ball that visualizes magic levels into numbers, and 8769 should be at the demon spirit level. The horseman also reveals that his magic level is at 4-star demon spirit, and his wives are all 4 or 5-star grand mages. Since they are going to team up, they should know each other well and cooperate better. After hearing the horseman's words, little girl Annie places her hand on the crystal ball, and it shows Annie's magic level, which is 300. One of the horseman's wives remarks that Annie had more than this value when she first changed her job. Annie is really disappointed, hearing cruel words from the horseman's wife, and starts crying. She apologizes to the horseman's wife, saying that her magic level just won't go up, she's just an average girl. On the other hand, Le Ping gets really excited after seeing the magic crystal demo. 
he says, let me try it too, knowing that he hasn't learned magic in these years, but as the legendary hero, his potential shouldn't be low either. With full excitement, Le Ping places his hand on the magic crystal. However, there is no immediate reaction from the crystal ball. Suddenly, a number shows on the crystal ball, indicating that Le Ping's magic level is zero. After seeing that, the horseman gets really confused. He doesn't know what happened, he has never seen something like that before. He says that even a pure martial arts user wouldn't have a magic level of zero. Le Ping places his hand on his forehead and explains that someone like him, who has been farming all his life, wouldn't have magic. He sits down on his chair and whispers that he's doomed to have no magic in this life because he never learned more about magic and swordsmanship. He has just been doing farming work all the time. The cat girl is really disappointed after seeing Le Ping's magic level. She asks him what he can do, stating that he seems to be of no help at all, just a dead weight to the team. After hearing these harsh words, Le Ping responds that he is good at something, farming. He mentions that he recently harvested some fruit they can try. The horsemen's wives express their disappointment, making fun of Le Ping. One of the girls comments that he's a typical bumpkin from a remote area, and suggests keeping the fruit for themselves. They don't think they need him. The cat girl wonders if Le Ping is really just an ordinary servant because he doesn't look like one. The horseman calms everyone down and asks Elizabeth, Princess Elizabeth, you should also try it. Everyone wants to know what your magic level is. However, Elizabeth doesn't listen to the horseman's words. Le Ping convinces Elizabeth to cooperate with them. Upon hearing this, Elizabeth gets annoyed and says they want the queen to accompany them to play with these ignorant mortals. He places his hand on the crystal ball, and suddenly, a bright light comes out of the crystal ball, becoming so intense that no one can see what's happening. Everyone closes their eyes due to the intense light. Le Ping is really scared. He thought if Elizabeth's identity as the Demon Queen is exposed, it will definitely cause a great uproar. He asked Elizabeth to control his magic level so they will not reveal Elizabeth's true identity. Elizabeth replies that he knows what he's doing. He will not reveal his true power. Elizabeth thought it's rare to come out, so he'll play with Le Ping. He controls his power, and everyone is really surprised at what's happening. After some time, the crystal ball starts showing Elizabeth's magic level. His level is 8768. After seeing this, little girl Annie says to everyone that big sis Elizabeth's level is just like Horse Brothers. It's a demon spirit level of strength. After seeing Elizabeth's magic level, the horsemen's wives are really surprised. They don't understand how this pumpkin girl's level is similar to their brothers. One of the girls says, no way, is this woman also a four-star demon spirit? Le Ping is relieved after seeing that Elizabeth has control over his magic power level. On the other hand, the horseman says that Elizabeth is truly amazing, worthy of being the princess of the kingdom. With her joining, their chances of getting the treasure will greatly increase. Little girl Annie asks the horseman how they can go to that treasure dungeon. Le Ping also thinks that this is his second time going out, and he encountered such a good thing. He can learn from them. The horseman asks one of his wives to tell them how they will go to the treasure dungeon. His wife says okay and retrieves a scroll from his bag. He throws the scroll in the air, and it starts glowing. This is a teleportation scroll. With this, they can teleport directly to the treasure dungeon. After using the teleportation scroll, they teleport into the dungeon. After seeing this, Le Ping is really surprised. He says that he is dizzy from the teleportation. Little girl Annie gets scared after seeing an unknown aura from the dungeon. But Elizabeth does not give a care about the dungeon. He's already faced more dangerous things than this dungeon. The horseman claims everyone and asks them, let's not delay, let's go into the treasure dungeon. After seeing this, Elizabeth says that he doesn't want to go and asks Le Ping, let's go home. Upon hearing these words from Elizabeth, the horseman and his wives are really surprised. One of the girls says to Elizabeth, what is he playing at? He came here and changed his mind at the last minute. Is he messing with us? Another two also say, does he know how many crystals and magic power it takes to make that teleportation scroll? If he doesn't go in, don't think about leaving here either. After hearing this, Elizabeth gets angry and asks them if they have the power, why don't they try to stop him? Wanna try? Le Ping comes forward and says to everyone, don't be impulsive, listen to him for a moment. He has an idea. In the next moment, he starts begging Elizabeth, saying that since he came here, just take him to see it. In another instance, a little girl, Annie, asks Elizabeth, did he notice? Inside the cave, there is a magic power that is very similar to him. After hearing Annie's words, Le Ping thought, a magic power that is very similar to Elizabeth's. What does she mean? He doesn't get what Annie is actually saying. The horseman comes forward, pushes Le Ping, and asks Elizabeth that he has to trust him. 
No matter what danger he encounters inside, he will protect him. Please go in with me, Princess Elizabeth. I hear some cringe-worthy words. I know this man is not good from the start. Please send me some holy water in the comments so I can recover. Let's go back to our story. Elizabeth doesn't care about him. He asks Le Ping to follow him, mentioning that he'll play with him since he rarely comes out. Le Ping starts following Elizabeth without saying a word. After seeing this, the horseman grits his teeth in frustration. They start entering the dungeon one by one. Annie is really surprised after entering the dungeon for the first time. Once inside, Le Ping notices the dungeon barrier closing and asks if they can't go back the way they came. Elizabeth explains that in this special magic space, it's impossible to leave by transfer magic unless they are stronger than the person who set up the barrier. Unless they find the target location and meet the requirements of the barrier setter, none of them can leave. After some time, they reach the main entrance of the dungeon. One of the girls says that as long as they have the master horseman with them, they will definitely get that thing. Another girl whispers, questioning what they will do if they know about that thing. Annie overhears their conversation and asks Sister Jellia what they mean by that thing. Elf girl Jellia ignores Annie's question and mentions that it's gold coins and treasure. She reassures Annie that they won't be left out. On the other hand, Le Ping asks about the forks in front of them and wonders where they should go. With Elizabeth backing them up, Le Ping thinks it's no problem. The adventure officially begins. The cat girl asks the horseman which way they should go and if they need to split up. The horseman says they don't have to split up for the time being and asks one of the girls to use that move. The pink-haired girl agrees and uses her magic wand to find the right route to the treasure. She tells Elizabeth that she'll find the shortest route to the treasure in no time. Elizabeth smiles and remarks that she is just ignorant and doesn't know how big the world is. After some time, the pink-haired girl shows that there are many treasure boxes, but she also reveals that there are monsters in this dungeon, and all the monsters are at the boss level. After finding that much, her mana drains out, and she can't explore more. After some time, the horseman asks the pink-haired girl about the situation in the maze and if she explored it till the end. The pink-haired girl replies that this maze seems to have no end. She has extended her magic to the limit and has not found any trace of the edge. After hearing this, another two girls are really surprised. They say, no way, Glee's magic extension concentrated distance is three kilometers long. They suggest using his spirit divination, but it has an accuracy rate of only 34%. However, they're not 100% sure. The cat girl suggests splitting up and acting in groups, with the ability to use the clone technique for support. Le Ping turns his head to Elizabeth and asks, Elizabeth, do you actually know how to go, right? Elizabeth smiles and says, of course, this maze is just an illusion. These ignorant youngsters will never get out if they want to explore the end. Then Le Ping asks why he doesn't lend a hand. They can also repay them a favor as soon as possible. Elizabeth nods his head and says no. He tells Le Ping that he has changed his mind now. He just wants to watch them perish with him. After some time, we see many tunnels, and one of them is the right tunnel. If they find the right direction, they can reach the treasure without any problems. Little girl Annie suggests that by going through the third cave, they should be able to reach the destination. After hearing Annie's words, Le Ping gets really excited and asks how she knew that. Little girl Annie says that she's just guessing, she doesn't know the correct tunnel. She also mentions that a special magic is coming from that direction. The pink-haired girl says to Annie that she's speaking nonsense and questions why she didn't feel the magic she mentioned. She insults her and says a mere four-star maid should not make random comments here. After hearing the cold words from the pink-haired girl, Annie gets scared and asks for forgiveness. The pink-haired girl says that they haven't explored the bottom, and according to known exploration, the last passage has the least monsters. Master, they should go this way. After hearing the pink-haired girl's words, the horseman asks the cat girl what he thinks. He says that he still thinks it's better to act in small teams so they can explore faster. Another girl says that she thinks it's better to listen to Glee, the pink-haired girl. Even if they go wrong in the end, they can just go back together. It's the safest. The pink-haired girl asks the horseman to trust her. She will scout them safely to the treasure. The horseman thought about it and said they'd act together in the last cave. After hearing the horseman's words, Annie shouted loudly, saying they could go anywhere else but not the last cave. He started casting his puppet magic and summoned a cute little rabbit doll. He asked his rabbit doll to go to the last tunnel, and in the next moment, a huge monster came out from the tunnel and ate the rabbit doll, leaving only its head. After witnessing this horrible scene, Le Ping's whole body was shaking with fear. He asked everyone, what is that thing? 
Elizabeth replied. That is a parasitic beast, usually found in the bodies of huge monsters. The cat girl asked the pink-haired girl if the explored area was the corpse in its stomach. After that, the pink-haired girl was really angry at Annie because he exposed him. After some time, Elizabeth said to let them struggle here by themselves and asked Le Ping to go. Le Ping scratched his head and asked Elizabeth if it would be best if he could lead the way. They don't know what danger is waiting for them, and Elizabeth and Le Ping started heading to the tunnel. Little girl Annie asked them if that direction is right and asked them to wait for him. In the next moment, the cat girl asked his master, the horseman, if he should use a clone to follow them and collect information. The horseman said to the cat girl that they don't need to. He thought that Elizabeth, having seen the horror of the mimic worm, wouldn't be able to make such a calm choice without confidence. It seems that Elizabeth's background is not so simple. The horseman told his wives that they would go and follow them for the time being, and they started following Elizabeth. On the other side, deep in the dungeon, we saw a huge glowing monster eye. Monsters start attacking on the theme, they begin fighting with the monster. The horseman asks his wife if they have solved it there. The warrior girl says that they have killed all remaining monsters, but the monsters on this road keep coming in waves, and they never stop. On the other side, Le Ping and little girl Annie are hiding behind Elizabeth. Le Ping asks Elizabeth if it's safe now and if there are any monsters remaining. Elizabeth turns her head to Le Ping, visibly angry, and tells him he is a truly terrible actor. The pink-haired girl says to Annie that it's all his fault, pointing out the road he led them to, which is full of monsters along the way. She also mentions that if they had taken his advice, they would have already found the treasure. Elizabeth defends little Annie, saying to the pink-haired girl that the more concentrated the magic, the more monsters naturally gather. She emphasizes that the pink-haired girl should know this is a mage. After hearing this from Elizabeth, the pink-haired girl gets really frustrated. She says that she knows that Elizabeth is a four-star demon spirit with the ability to defeat the monsters, but she stands by and watches coldly. She also claims that Elizabeth is despicable and doesn't care about anyone. Elizabeth replies that this is their problem and what they agreed upon before leaving, to solve the monsters they encounter. The horseman steps forward and asks the pink-haired girl to calm down, reminding her that they promised to protect them. Hearing this, the pink-haired girl gets even angrier. The horseman turns his head to Elizabeth and says with a nice smile that it's okay. It's his honor to escort Miss Elizabeth. There's a hint of sarcasm as the narrator speculates on the horseman's intentions, wondering how many women he wants in his harem and what he plans to do with them. Anyway, let's get back to our story. After hearing their conversation, the pink-haired girl is really angry, thinking that Elizabeth not only embarrassed him but also dared to seduce the master. The elf girl suggests to the horseman that they rest for a while, emphasizing the need to recover their energy after fighting with monsters for so long. Elizabeth doesn't agree with their idea, stating that she doesn't have extra time to waste on them. The cat girl is frustrated with Elizabeth, asking why, if she's so good, she doesn't just go on by herself. The elf girl agrees, pointing out that if it weren't for them blocking all kinds of monsters, they wouldn't be so relaxed. The horseman steps forward and urges Elizabeth to listen, suggesting that it's better for everyone to rest and recover some energy. He offers some elf potion, explaining that after drinking it, they can recover their status. Le Ping, curious about the potion, asks Elizabeth if he can try it, making a cute little puppy face and suggesting it might give him some new inspiration for his cooking. Elizabeth thinks that Le Ping has already enjoyed many good things and wants to experience something ordinary. She gives him permission, and later they set up their camp to get some rest. The pink-haired girl praises Jellia's elf potion, mentioning that it really works, and the warrior girl states that she has finally recovered, though she's unsure how long it will take to find the treasure. The elf girl retrieves a potion from her storage ring and offers it to Elizabeth, calling it her special elf potion that enhances various states. Elizabeth, being powerful, declines, but the horseman intervenes, telling the elf girl not to be rude and instructing her to give a potion to everyone. Unhappily, she tosses a potion to Elizabeth, who catches it but isn't pleased. Elizabeth gives the potion to Le Ping, who, after tasting it, finds the grassy flavor too strong and decides not to drink it. He offers it to Annie, who thanks him but explains that she hasn't used much magic power, so she doesn't need it. After hearing Le Ping's criticism of his potion, the elf girl expresses displeasure, deeming it a waste on someone with no magic power. Elizabeth, not pleased with the elf girl's words, dumps the potion into the fire, further infuriating her. 
she questions Elizabeth about dumping her elf potion, to which Elizabeth coldly responds that she agrees with the elf girl's thoughts, showing no regard for the potions. Le Ping intervenes, calming everyone down and stating that he has something for everyone that shouldn't be crushed. He retrieves bananas from his bag, expressing his desire to share them. Le Ping gives a banana to the horseman and distributes bananas to everyone. Finally, he gives an apple to Annie, mentioning that the bananas have all been divided and asking if she can eat an apple. Annie, emotional after receiving the apple, asks if he's really giving it to her, surprising Le Ping, who thought it was just an apple and sees no need for tears. Annie asks Le Ping if she can take the apple back to her brother and sister. The orphans in the orphanage haven't eaten fresh fruit for a long time. After hearing Annie's story, Le Ping understands why she is crying. He tells her that, of course, she can take it back, and he'll pick some more for her when he gets home to send over. Le Ping promises Annie that everyone in the orphanage can eat fresh fruit. The pink-haired girl throws the banana that Le Ping gave her, saying she doesn't care about this rotten fruit and doesn't need it. The elf girl also agrees, stating that it can't be compared with her elf potion. The horseman suggests they fill their stomachs for now, and when they get the treasure, he'll treat them to something good. They start eating bananas, and after the first bite, they feel something strange. Their bodies start glowing, and in the next moment, they find themselves in the forest. They ask what place it is, and suddenly, three mantises appear and start singing. They ask the group to dance with them, and all three of them start dancing. Le Ping is confused, not knowing what they are doing. This is the effect of the banana. The pink-haired girl and elf girl, who didn't eat the banana, are really surprised. The elf girl asks the horseman what he's doing. 22. In the next moment after eating bananas, the horsemen and his wives level up, and they don't understand what's going on. Their magic levels are constantly rising. After seeing their dance performance, Le Ping is surprised. He claps and calls it a bonfire performance, expressing his genuine liking for it. Le Ping also mentions that the cultural customs of the other world are really interesting, making it worth coming out to see centaurs dancing. Elizabeth, observing Le Ping's happiness, thinks that Le Ping, being aware of the potential danger ahead, enhanced them and advanced to continue this game. On the other hand, the elf girl, who didn't eat the banana, is puzzled and asks what's going on. She wonders how their magic levels suddenly skyrocketed so much. Seeing their surprise, Annie explains that it's because they ate Brother Le Ping's bananas. However, the pink-haired girl doesn't believe Annie's words. She dismisses it, stating it's nonsense and questioning if those broken bananas are soaked in holy water to provide a status boost. The warrior girl says to the pink-haired girl, Jellia, that it was the banana that made them break through in advance. She mentions ascending to a two-star demon spirit just a few seconds after eating the banana. The cat girl agrees, stating that just after they ate the banana, they entered a new realm. She wonders if the banana was enchanted by a magician of the demon sovereign level. The horseman adds that after eating, even he broke through three stages in a row, directly ascending to a three-star great demon spirit, finding it unbelievable. He asks Le Ping about the origin of the bananas he gave them. On the other side, Le Ping is really confused. He doesn't understand the horseman's words. For Le Ping, these bananas are just ordinary. Getting this reaction from Le Ping, the horseman asks what's wrong. Le Ping says nothing, mentioning that being suddenly asked by him. He doesn't know how to answer because they are just ordinary bananas. The horseman is not pleased with Le Ping's words, thinking it should be a hybrid crop that Le Ping grew with some magic item. Le Ping clarifies that he grew these bananas with natural and organic farming, a production method he thought of in this world full of magic. Hearing about the magical banana from their master, the pink-haired girl, and the elf girl decide to eat it to increase their magic levels. After taking a bite, the banana rots, and the pink-haired girl throws it away, saying it's clearly bad. After seeing this, little Annie says it's synchronicity. Elizabeth praises her for knowing what synchronicity is, and Annie mentions that she learned it from the magic books. At the same time, the horseman asks Annie what synchronicity means. Annie explains that the nun's magic books mention special treasures usually have to be used under special conditions to exert their effects. She guesses that Le Ping's banana had to be eaten by three or more people at the same time to produce an effect. Upon hearing this, the pink-haired girl gets angry at Annie questioning why she pretends to know things she doesn't. She points out that Elizabeth ate the banana herself and hers didn't rot. Annie apologizes, admitting she doesn't know either but suggests that unless the user's strength completely surpasses the treasure, it's nothing but an ordinary thing to them. 
On the other side, Elizabeth eats his banana without any problems and warns Annie not to look at him with those eyes. Annie apologizes, and the elf girl suggests that maybe it's because of his accumulated elf potion over time that produced the effect. The horseman asks Le Ping if he can share more fruits from his backpack to test if it's real. The elf girl questions if the horseman actually believes their nonsense about the magical banana. Le Ping happily says that sharing is the greatest joy and starts getting more fruits from his bag. Meanwhile, Elizabeth has already finished eating his banana, snatches Le Ping's bag, and declares that these are what she's going to eat later. She refuses to give his precious fruits to anyone and tells Le Ping to leave when they've rested enough because the journey is almost over. Le Ping apologizes to the horseman and says he will treat him well when he has the chance. The horseman understands the situation and tells Le Ping to go ahead. He'll catch up with his wives after packing up. Le Ping is grateful and suggests they set off together, but Elizabeth interrupts, urging him to hurry up or she will leave without him. Le Ping agrees and asks the horseman to gather up ahead and meet later. Seeing this, the horseman's wives are not happy. The cat girl whispers, suggesting they snatch that backpack away, as they might be hiding something even better. The horseman calms down his wives and says there's no rush, it's not the right time yet. He also mentions that ordinary people wouldn't casually carry such precious treasures, so she's definitely not a simple princess from a remote tribe. Recently, one of the four major powers, the Kingdom of Aristotle, is offering a high reward for information on the missing princess. If he is not mistaken, that princess is right in front of him now. If he can turn the princess into his woman during this opportunity, he can climb the ranks of the Kingdom of Aristotle's power. By then, he'll gain more than just these magical fruits before him. He starts laughing loudly and declares he will conquer Elizabeth and make her one of his harem girls. After seeing the horseman like this, his four wives start praising him, saying a charming pheromone is emanating from the master. They blame themselves, stating they haven't been able to satisfy their master yet. In the depths of the labyrinth, many monsters hide in the shadows. One of them is the Shadow Wolf Leader, a powerful monster who suddenly becomes really scared. In the next moment, we see three individuals entering the cave, Elizabeth, Le Ping, and little girl Annie. Le Ping asks Elizabeth about the darkening labyrinth and if there really is an exit. Elizabeth replies that she's already told him, the labyrinth is just an appearance, and they're almost there. They start heading deeper into the cave, but little girl Annie is really scared. She asks Le Ping about something approaching them. Le Ping asks Annie to explain clearly, but suddenly, something approaches them at high speed. After that, smoke covers everyone. When the smoke clears, we see the horseman arriving with his wives. He apologizes for keeping everyone waiting and asks Elizabeth for forgiveness. He also offers to serve them for the rest of the way, suggesting that Elizabeth can even sit on his back. However, he doesn't realize that Elizabeth is a self-independent woman. She tells the horseman to get lost, stating that he's not qualified to be her mount. But you know, guys, I'm fully qualified. Elizabeth can sit on my face, and I will be really happy. Anyway, let's get back to our story. But the elf girl is not really happy. She says Elizabeth is an arrogant woman and asks him not to be shameless when the master gives him face. But in the next moment, his head explodes. Everyone gets really surprised, they don't know what happened. They get really scared. Suddenly, some stones fall from above. When Le Ping turns his head to the ceiling, he sees many insect monsters. He asks what they are. This monster is a dragon flea, and it is eating the elf girl's head. It jumps from the ceiling and starts attacking Elizabeth. However, it doesn't know who Elizabeth is. Elizabeth's eyes glow red, and in the next moment, the monster explodes. Little girl Annie is really scared. She says they're done. Everyone is going to die. Le Ping is also scared. He comes to Elizabeth, catches his leg, and says it's a matter of life and death. He asks Elizabeth, what are we going to do now? Elizabeth thought to test human nature, let the selfish and arrogant ones destroy themselves first. This is his first step. There are many monsters attacking with really high speed. The warrior girl gets the carriage and transforms it into a shield. The pink-haired girl starts casting magic, shield transformation, shield blade, and magic shield. She creates a shield barrier and gets the horseman and warrior girl inside the barrier. After seeing them, Le Ping asks, what about them? The horseman replies that he believes they will find a way by themselves. He thinks this is a good opportunity to find out the strength of Elizabeth. If she doesn't make a move, his servant and that girl will be eaten by the monsters. The warrior girl says, who cares about them now? The cooperation is over. The pink-haired girl says they just stay outside and be bait. But in the next moment, her head gets severed. After seeing the pink-haired girl's head, the warrior girl gets really scared. If the pink-haired girl is killed, the magic barrier she set up disappears, and monsters start attacking them. 
On the other side, Le Ping is still hiding behind Elizabeth, but the horseman uses his thunderbolt flash to kill monsters in just one attack. The warrior girl also uses her shield strike and kills the monsters. The cat girl is an assassination type. She uses her short blade technique to kill, but no matter how she kills these monsters, they seem never-ending. If this goes on, they will be exhausted at this rate. When she's thinking, suddenly, a monster starts attacking him. Luckily, the horseman saves him after using his clapping thunder back step. But no matter how many monsters they kill, there seems to be no end to this. After that, Elizabeth says to Le Ping, see their true colors. Do you still want to continue this adventure game with them? Le Ping says, forget it. Coming here is to pay back the favor, and as they say, it's time to part ways. But he also thought the outside world is truly unpredictable. Maybe farming in the village suits him better. Elizabeth smiles and thinks, first make them swell, then determine if they have any value worth saving. This is his third step. She asks Le Ping to get ready to go out. After hearing this, Le Ping asks, go out. Is there any way? She says to him, just ahead. But in the next moment, a monster approaches and starts attacking little girl Annie. She thinks this is the end of her life, but suddenly, her bunny doll transforms and kills the monster. After killing the monster, he changes again. Little girl Annie doesn't know what happened just now, but before she knows it, Le Ping asks her to come. After a moment later, Elizabeth reaches the invisible barrier she started casting a magic spell on. After that, the magic barrier disappears, and a really giant door comes out. Le Ping is really surprised. He says, so the exit is a hidden giant door. The giant door starts opening, and Elizabeth asks them to hurry up and catch up. The horseman is steering Le Ping, but he doesn't give a thought about him. Le Ping asks Annie to let's go. After that, they go through the door. On the other side, the horseman and his wives are fighting with monsters. He asks his wives to hurry up and get on his back and hold on. He is really angry, saying they think they can shake us off like this, and starts running to the giant door. After a moment later, they reach the door, but after they see what is inside the door, they get really surprised. The room is filled with gold and jewelries. They get really surprised after seeing that they're standing on a flying island filled with treasure. Le Ping gets really excited, saying there's so much gold, and he feels rich. Little girl Annie is also standing there, thinking if they can really take some of it. Suddenly, a horseman comes and pushes Le Ping and horseman wife, pushing little girl Annie as well. The horseman, after seeing the treasure, gets really surprised and suddenly smiles, thinking that the treasure he's been working so hard to get really exists. The treasure he is talking about is the Demon King's nectar. Le Ping interrupts them and says, Now that we've found the treasure, we have to share this. We don't ask for your gratitude, but don't be too unreasonable. But the horseman is not happy, replying, Yes, we didn't expect you all to be so helpful in filling the numbers. As a thank you, I will let them die quickly. However, when the horseman tries to do something with Le Ping and the others, a big yellow eye opens from the gold coins, and the whole island starts shaking. Suddenly, a big dragon appears in front of everyone. Seeing the dragon, Le Ping gets really scared and asks Elizabeth to look at the dragon. This is the first time Le Ping has seen a real dragon, but Elizabeth doesn't seem to care. On the other side, little girl Annie's whole body is shaking with fear, and she mentions that there's something more terrifying hidden. Suddenly, her eyes turn black, and she asks for some master, wondering what they should do now. Seeing little girl Annie like that, Elizabeth gets suspicious, but before she can say something, the yellow dragon starts attacking. The warrior girl asks the horseman and cat girl what they should do since the dragon is really powerful. However, the horseman ignores them, asking them to buy him some time and let him charge up to kill it with one strike. The cat girl and warrior girl agree and start attacking the dragon. The warrior girl asks the cat girl to distract its attention so she can attack properly. The cat girl agrees, using her clone technique to create 100 clones and start attacking the dragon. On the other side, the horseman is smile and thinks that now the giant dragon is the only threat, so he doesn't need to hide his power anymore. He calls upon all his magic to gather energy for the strongest move, Swift Thunder Flash. His sword starts glowing, and on the other side, the cat girl continuously attacks the dragon with her assassination technique. For some reason, her skills are not working, and she can't get a single scratch on the dragon. She thinks that her assassination technique can give the attack power to him, a weak point breaking effect, but it can't even scratch the dragon. Suddenly, the warrior girl says to the cat girl to let her handle it. She uses her skill, Shield Transformation Blaster, and throws her really big shield at the dragon. And she thought it worked. This is the new move she learned after becoming a two-star demon spirit, and she gets really happy. 
But, on the other side, the dragon doesn't get any scratches after being hit by a massive shield, so he gets really angry at the warrior girl and starts attacking. Seeing the dragon without any scratches, she gets really confused and wonders why her attacks don't work on him. But in the next moment, the dragon kills her in just a single attack. After seeing this horrifying scene, the cat girl gets really mad and starts using her thousand-person clone technique. In the next moment, thousands of cats come out and start attacking the dragon. After that, she says she can't do much damage to the dragon, but it should be enough to disturb him. But she misunderstands the dragon. The dragon uses his skill, Golden Hurricane, and all the gold coins surrounding him start creating a tornado around him, killing all the cat clones. Some of the gold coins start attacking the cat girl. In the next moment, Le Ping and Elizabeth also start getting attacked by these gold coins. Le Ping is standing there without doing anything. Elizabeth says to Le Ping that he's so calm, but that's to be expected from him. But Elizabeth doesn't know that Le Ping is really scared. He is thinking that he almost died just now. But the dragon doesn't stop, he continues his attack. Little girl Annie uses his dollhouse release summon technique, and a massive bear comes out to defend them. It starts protecting them from the dragon's attack. At the same moment, when the horseman is casting his skill, some of the gold coins try to attack him. But the cat girl starts defending him. However, when she thinks everything is fine, a gold coin comes out and splits into his head. On the other side, the horseman completes his skill casting and uses his 300% lightning flash technique, so he can kill this dragon in just one attack. This strike, even a demon spirit can't block it. But his skill doesn't work, and the dragon is standing unscratched. In another side, his sword got broken, and he doesn't know what happened. But when the horseman thinks about his sword, suddenly the dragon attacks with his tail and flings him to the other side. In the start, they don't have any idea that this dragon they're fighting is a golden dragon, level, four-star demon sect. Seeing the horseman fight with the dragon, Le Ping thought, did the centaur die from its tail slap? Looks like I have to use my trump card. So he asked Elizabeth. Elizabeth asked him, what are you going to do next? Le Ping replied and asked Elizabeth to take action. Elizabeth was surprised, thinking, did he find out already? But she was wrong. Le Ping, fearing they might die if she doesn't help, expressed his view that if she doesn't assist, he will be in danger. Elizabeth replied with a rude face, don't order me in front of outsiders. However, she thought, does Le Ping want to use little girl Annie to threaten him? No way. On the other side, little girl Annie said, the real terror hasn't come yet. We might never get out of here. After hearing this, Elizabeth went to little girl Annie and examined her. She showed that little girl Annie had the bloodline of Jimji and asked her to let her see what her magic is all about. Elizabeth placed his hand on little girl Annie's head, and a purple light surrounded her body. After that, little girl Annie started remembering her past when she was playing and eating with her younger siblings. One day, black robe monsters attacked them, and when they tried to kill little girl Annie, she suddenly awakened her bloodline power, killing all of them but losing control and also killing her younger siblings. From that day, she forcibly suppressed her own magic to alter her memory. After finding out this, Elizabeth told little girl Annie how stupid she is and released her magic. Little girl Annie was crying and said, It's all my fault, brother and sister, I killed you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But Elizabeth didn't care. She said to little girl Annie, You're a disgrace to the Jimji clan's bloodline. If you want to escape from the prison of regret, stand up and fight for me. After hearing Elizabeth's words, little girl Annie said, You are right, and stood up, saying, At least this time, I want to protect brother Le Ping. She started floating in the sky and used her puppet magic summoning magic skill. Suddenly, many big and powerful puppets appeared. The dragon started attacking little girl Annie, but her panda puppet blocked the dragon's attack with its body. The panda grabbed the dragon's leg, so it couldn't move. On the other side, the rabbit doll started attacking the dragon, striking multiple times in the same spot and breaking the dragon's hard body. Le Ping asked Elizabeth, Elizabeth, what did you do to Annie just now? How did she change so much? Elizabeth replied, she did nothing, she just made her accept reality. Little girl Annie struggled with the dragon, commanding her rabbit puppet to grab the dragon's other leg. When the dragon attacked the rabbit, it grabbed its hand. Both the panda and rabbit were preventing the dragon from moving, and little girl Annie commanded her snake puppet to attack the dragon. The snake puppet grabbed the dragon's whole body and started attacking. The dragon used its golden hurricane to counter, but little girl Annie's eagle puppet used its wind magic to stop the dragon's attack. Le Ping was genuinely surprised after seeing Annie's power and said, she is so amazing. He also asked Elizabeth, by the way, what does it mean that Annie has the Jimji bloodline? 
but before he could finish his words, Elizabeth pushed him back because someone attacked them with a lightning flash. The one who attacked Le Ping was the horseman, who was still alive. He got Le Ping's bag containing magical fruits. Seeing him alive, Elizabeth said, this scum hasn't died yet. On the other side, Le Ping asked him to give the bag back, but the horsemen paid no attention to them, stating that the trump cards in their hands, these fruits of the realm, are now his. He started eating Le Ping's magical fruits, but Le Ping didn't understand and asked, what are you doing? It's already late, and you still want to eat. After eating Le Ping's magical fruits, something started changing in the horseman's body. Purple smoke appeared from his body, and suddenly, his body transformed into an ugly monster. He exclaimed, This power that keeps pouring out. I feel an unprecedented strength. And started laughing like a villain. He is now a Hawthorn Tharais, and his level is unknown. The horseman said that with this power, he is no longer afraid of those old guys from the Sword Saint Guild. But before he could complete his words, the golden dragon started attacking him with its golden dragon breath. The horseman dodged the dragon's attack and suddenly appeared in front of the dragon's face, laughing and telling the dragon to stop bothering him. He prepared his thunder kick and attacked the dragon, killing it with a single blow. After killing the dragon, he headed to the treasure, lifting the coffin filled with some kind of liquid. After getting it, he said, If I add this, I can't even imagine how strong I will become, and started drinking it. After drinking some, changes started happening in his body, and moments later, he evolved into the evil face form, saying it's worthy of being the demon king's sweet wine. He gradually understood everything. On the other side, Le Ping said to Elizabeth, that guy is getting weirder and weirder, and asked Elizabeth to hurry up and do something. But little girl Annie said to Elizabeth, don't worry, I won't let him get close to you and brother Le Ping, and started casting his puppet magic. But before he could complete it, the horseman killed little girl Annie, stating, first, eliminate him as a threat. After seeing Annie, Le Ping got surprised, his eyes filled with tears. The horseman headed toward Le Ping, saying, next is his turn. Le Ping grabbed little girl Annie's body and said, Annie sister, hang in there, Elizabeth will save you. On the other side, the horseman came to Elizabeth and said, I know you are hiding your strength, but it doesn't matter. Now I give you two choices. First, willingly become my woman, then take me back to your kingdom and help me inherit everything. Second, be slowly played by me until you become a waste, and then be used by me as a bargaining chip to get what I want. Le Ping was really angry, he asked Elizabeth to kill him. After hearing Le Ping's words, the horseman said to Le Ping, When is it your turn to talk, you trash servant? And started attacking Le Ping with his thunder road. But before he could attack Le Ping, something attacked him, and the horseman started flying in the air. Smoke covered everyone, and when the smoke started to disappear, we saw Le Ping saying, Fine, I won't pretend anymore. 